It's Monday morning, and it is Collider Live. That's right, Collider Live. I'm Christian Harloff, and it's our show where we talk about whatever the hell we want to talk about. Hashtag that's the show. And with me today, Marcus Elias has joined the table. How's your iced tea? You want to go where everybody knows your name. <laughs> You're a great singer. Yeah, uh, Someone you. who is actually allowed to sing that song from where it originates from is Roxy Stryer. Hello, Origin. Hey. Origini? Hello, Originy. Oh, okay. you had it, too. That was really good Origini? cheers. Yeah. Good yeah. day to be from Boston, man. It's a good day. Oh, yeah, your fans are the classiest. No, no, she knows it. I'm going to give her <laughs> oh, credit, though. She, oh, no, they are not. No, no she Sorry. acknowledges they stink. But uh, for, as far as I go, I, I honor my bets, and I got... I haven't said anything to you yet, yep. because, you know, it's not nice to yeah. poke somebody when they're down. Yeah, it, well... It's not nice. So was this I'm a just Giants gonna, Patriots bet? It's gonna no, enjoy. No, no, oh yeah, you weren't on the show last week. So um, we, I bet Snyder, who's not even a baseball fan. <laughs> he said dismissively. Oh yeah, you weren't even on the you show last week. You were doing that that <laughs> movie what talk doing, thing. Man. Yeah. Um, but he, uh, he and I had a bet that he doesn't even watch baseball. But I figured, and I said that I. Oh, it was Red Sox Yankees. Well, yeah. we showed the video when I got my head shaved because I've only because I don't as we, as we talked about I don't lose bets often. You don't lose much because the times I lose is when I bet emotionally. And I did it, and I did it a couple times, and I did it with Snyder. I haven't been following the season well enough to mm-hmm. where it's like I should really be locked in, and that's what I do when I bet smart. I bet against him, and now I'm wearing the stupid shirt for three days. I got so. a funny feeling the Yankees are going to bounce back I and be so just too. fine I think next so too. season. But I, w- <laughs> but I will tell you, I got some good news. There was a war won last night. A war was won. If you've been listening to the this show, war? no, that one's going on. We'll talk about it in a second. <laughs> that one is has hit. New levels. We, I think we've started a, a national squirrel war. Have I get you been so many tweets this? about twirls. Unbelievable. Twirls? My, my voice, my, my words are mixed up. That one, I'll. Uh, all right, I'll tell you that one first. Okay. <laughs> because that because this one is not uh, this one's not even close. I'm convinced that the squirrels listen to the show. Because if they I'll, listen to the show. I'll tell you why. Uh-huh. Boy, you haven't lost. You it have at all. become <laughs> Wilford Brimley and uh, hard target batshit s- insane. Well, something's happening because this is what Ice happened pole. to me yesterday. My my wife goes. You know, and there was something in the laundry. So she's like, "Can you just throw it in the dryer?" I was like, "Absolutely," and I promise you, this is a true story. I walk out of my house, and the second I walk, it's a scene out of a movie, like the fucking squirrel go, "There he is, run!" One squirrel jumps off the roof into this tree above me. The other one jumps on the fence. The other one goes back on the roof, and they they hightail it out. And like all three, there's literally a a squirrel jumped so far from the roof into the tree. It was like I I couldn't believe it. It's like all three of them were there. They were they, they keep eating my my the, the plants, and I had to respect it because it was like a court. It reminded me like Jason Statham in the bank job. So you don't think this has anything to do with the fact that they're getting shot with pellet guns? I didn't shoot anyone the, with pellet guns. The gun. fact that maybe the, their food ran out, or just they're scared of humans in general because you're ten times the size. They must be listening to the show. That well, is the only explanation. Probably not. But the fact that the fact that they were, I think that they're messing with me now because they, they've they never been three of them. And now they're jumping But now you have together. respect, and that's a different level. I have respect in the fact that it was like, look, they, they just have no they have no regard for anything. They're running because, you know, people were, like you said, the, the neighbors are, sh- and, and the pellets are the ones that like, pelt them in the ass and they run. It doesn't hurt them. If I'm writing this movie, then yeah. the way that I have it is you're the beleaguered homeowner who can't stand all these squirrels and who's really controlling it. The is animated film. Either, yeah. Is either... The Bluetooth guy who lives across the street from you, he's got the Bluetooth, so he's kind of like the Dr. Claw slash Gargamel. Operation Squirrel, or, yeah. Or, and I hate to say yeah. this, it's your own children who are actually controlling the squirrels because children nah, love it, children love squirrels. Nah, not my, children no, love wow. squirrels. It's funny you say that because... My daughter, the second, my oldest, the second that it goes down, she's got the water blaster, and she's because even my neighbor's like, you've you've made you've given your oldest daughter a hatred for squirrels because she's running around blasting squirrels with it's water. It's the now. baby. Yeah, the baby does. But ah, it could be amazing. Yeah. But you know why it's not the you know why it's not the first option mm. because that's the war that was won last night. Ooh, the Bluetooth war. The war was won last uh, night. I, I, it's a shame I didn't get to witness it in person. So so last night the the, the baby the baby's been sick, so. And again, people who don't have kids don't understand this. Like when you, when you, when the baby goes down, I'm the stepfather of a dog. I think I can relate when, when pretty ba- well. It's you cherish those moments. You cherish those moments of sleep. You yeah. Ch- right. For when the baby's sleeping, because that's when you get your free time. Yeah. Right. Because this uh, goes into a new, a new war that was raged over the weekend. But this, so my wife is now with my oldest, and then I hear this loud voice. Hey, you know, we'll 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 put we'll put the reports down, and Jim will see him, and it'll be fine. I'm like. What are we doing? Here it comes at nine at night. 
Do and I look, and I look across the street, and the guy is on his Bluetooth, and he's walking. I go, this is, I go, I got to do it. I thought of you. I actually thought of you. Did you water blast him? I didn't water blast him. you didn't think of me, clearly. No, because you, you, you were, you're, on, you're on the side of these people that I met over the weekend, and it's like, you're, you, were, you I cannot wait until you have children, because your whole dynamic will Oh, you change. can't, can you? Yes. I don't know what you said, but it's fine. <laughs> you sounded like, I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait, Roxy. Yeah. Um, oh, did you see those Boston fans dumping beer on poor Tyreek Hill last posh, night? Posh, posh. <laughs> so yes, I yes, see I this did. guy. He's dilly walk- dilly. <laughs> yeah, he's walking across the street. And so then I, I walk down there, and I'm watching him just pace. So I stand across the street. Smart, yeah. I stand across the street first to see if he gets an eye on me, right? And he does. But he's still like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, you were thinking if he saw you, he would just kind of hush. Thinking. So then I walk across the street. I'm like, all right, I'm going for it. So I walk across and I see the guy and I go, I go, hey, dude. And he, 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 he talks to his, he he talks his the friend. Button. No, he goes, he's like, hey, brother, hold on one sec. And I say, I go, hey, I just let you know, I got, I got a one year old. And before I could say anything else, he goes, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go in. And he was a cool guy. And he stopped. And I hope that that's the end of it. That was it. That it was, was great. He wasn't a douche. He wasn't. I was because I was ready. I was waiting. Multiple follow-ups. Yeah. Number one: yeah. What happens if this is not the end of it? At what point do you go back out there? Mm. Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> With the pellet gun. I don't know about the pellet gun, but maybe you know. It's like, I was why aiming don't the at a squirrel. Bother that guy. Um, but no, he was. I mean, look, I, we'll deal with that when it comes. I had the. I, I had a very similar war that was won on my home you front. Did. What was it? That was. It, 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 it was it, a similar happy ending where you build this all up in your head like this is going to be this huge thing. Yeah. It's going to be. This. You're ready to scrap. Yeah. Um, so I'm I'm in a new place that's still in the same building, right? And so I'm living there, and the only real issue I've had with my building, besides the fact that occasionally somebody gets shot out front, is that. <laughs> When you are, yeah, it's not squirrels. And, like, it, I'm on the th- uh, fifth floor, and there's people above and people below, right? And the doors are so thick. You can't hear anything. The door so, but upstairs and downstairs you can hear. And I kept hearing music. And I woke up at 1.30, mm-hmm. and I heard music. It wasn't, like, loud, like, <laughs> but it was music. And I'm like, you know, it's kind of pleasant music, but it's 1.30, and I need my sleep. You know how much I, I love my sleep. Uh-huh. And, I'm, and I'm just thinking in my head, okay, who are these people that live right. downstairs? How am I going to approach this? It's 1.30 in the morning. I get up, I look in the mirror, and I'm like, I still look okay. I, I look presentable. So put on this very sweatshirt, and I walk downstairs, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to make sure it's the one right under me. And I walk by the door, and sure enough, the music's yeah. loud. Yeah. And I'm like, <sighs> let's get ready. Because my apartment has a policy that you're not supposed to confront your neighbors. That you, you, that you're supposed to run it through them. And at one thirty in the morning, smart, they want you to run with them. Smart no, I mean, policy. Like, like the policy. next morning, I would I would email them, and this isn't the first night I've heard music. Well, what so. are you supposed to do? So why while did you email them? In the past? You email them. You, you suck it up, then oh, you email them. That you're like, hey, policy. the next thing. If you had done yeah. that the first time it happened, it wouldn't have happened the next time. It's a horrible policy. No, I, I don't, you don't like it. Don't want to knock on your neighbor's doors. I, I don't right, like screw. it because because then it's very it's very passive aggressive. Yeah, and I really I do get that, and you might get them in trouble with the apartment. Right, rather confront it head on. Yeah, yeah, just have a conversation. Just be a human being. If they're Douche, then you go to the, the people. Absolutely. Yeah. So I, not, I ring the doorbell, music stops. Opening the door is maybe six feet, uh, female 20s blonde dancer. <laughs> and first of all, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, is this all? <laughs> like, I'm looking in there. I'm like, this is the, okay. This is the issue, okay. And <laughs> she's she's from uh, some sort of European country, right? So right? she says like noon. English, is this a real story? This is a totally real story. Yeah. It's one thirty in the morning. So You're we in make passionate love. No, um, <laughs> no. But I tell her that I'm like, hey, uh, I, I live right upstairs, and you know, I, I don't want to be a nuisance. I'm very nice about it. And she's like, I'm a dancer. I just moved here. Sorry. I thought that because the doors are so thick, I thought Couldn't that it was it. like yeah. that. And she's like, here's what I'll do. Uh, t- I'm gonna take your number right now, and so then you'll have my number, yeah, I've and then this we're gonna do, and then you know, any issue we have, because sure. look, she looks at me right now. She's like, hey, good neighbors are hard to find. And I'm like, yeah, right. they are. And I'm like, I'm thinking like this is some sort of trick that, that right. somebody's going to beat the shit out of me at any given Turned moment. into a werewolf and bite you. Right. Right. And then we just go about our separate ways. She turns in. She's like, go back upstairs, and I'm going to turn it down halfway. And she's like, and let me know, but feel free to text me yeah. if uh, too loud. you want me to turn yeah. it down more. And or then you want to grab drinks. the capper is that she says, <laughs> hey, because I told her that um, – 
<laughs> that occasionally I have a dog come over. I have Danny's dog Molly will come over yeah, yeah. and run around and play with me. And she's she texts me the next day. She's like, "Hey, um, if you ever if you or uh, or Danny ever need a dog sitter." I, I'm a dog sitter. No, oh, so look at this. So it worked out. This is a fantastic thing that happened for you. Yeah. So the point right, of this. I, I, but the, the, I, music, the music's for Molly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the music's for Molly. I have changed my mind. New, the yeah. point of this, this is, a good, good is play. it's good to knock on the door. Always, yeah. if, if there's an issue with a neighbor, yeah. whether it's across the street or it's below or above, right. just knock on the door. I, just be a human being. I because, went through it. I went through This is where the new thing began. I went, yeah. I went through this this weekend as well. So the next door to me is this it's like in it's your from, from, area well, right next you to you guys attach an attached wall it's, or no well, it's, a, it's very east coast it's like the it's like the how the apartment right next door is with if you look in my backyard it's you can hear things going on what <laughs> michael something in the chat room said dear penthouse i never thought this would happen <laughs> get your mind out of the gutter everybody right. so so when we so at, at there's been a couple of different neighbors that have lived there. The one we first moved there, it was this family with kids, and it was wonderful. You never heard them ever. Then you never family heard the kids? with kids, the, the kids went to sleep. You hear them oh, you know, at night. Well, yeah, daytime. Who gives a crap? I mean, that that's to me. You is do where, on Sundays. No, no, no. We learned that. That is, Mr. Yes. That is not. Time. That is not what we have learned. You I, rub I agree. And I agreed with you during during the. I don't like when Bluetooth man is running back and forth, but it's not time. But time not I would time say to anything. Say okay. It's nighttime when you could potentially w- wake someone up. Now and same thing with those kids. They never bothered anybody. Then there was a whole. Then it was like uh, they they was like fifty people moved into this place one time. They were super loud. But we had those conversations knocking on the door, and, and those people eventually moved out. So now there's a new girl that lives there, and I think she has these other people that come in, and they're like, but all her the friends, yeah. But the only are these the doing, friends that peed? No, 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 no. These are the this, drunk peers. No, no, no. This is this is something else. But they're all just sit, the problem is they're all sitting around in the living room just drinking, talking, not doing anything that's enough that's anything crazy. But because of the way that it's set up. It booms into my bedroom. You can hear it. Yeah. At eleven o'clock at night, it was happening. I'm like, I'm not going to say anything. It's eleven o'clock on a Saturday. Then that that's can't on do me. it on can't, a Saturday. Can't do it on eleven o'clock. It's fine. It comes to be around one o'clock. Still loud as hell. So before I know the wife or the baby going to wake up, it hasn't happened yet. I'm I'm going to nip this in the bud. I walk over there. You know, put the hat on, have the pajama pants. Don't give a shit. Walk over, knock over. You, and... you want to present yourself as somewhat of a beleaguered father already. That's what I did. So yeah. I walked over and I was like, and I had the scratchy kind of voice the first. And I'm like, hey, yeah, this is exactly the kind of mood that was going on when I walked over there first too. And I was like, this guy opens the door and he's like, can I help you? And I'm like, I live next door and got a one-year-old. It's always the one-year-old thing that you lead with, right? And I was like, if you guys, I was like, I'm because t- I've talked to this girl before, I was like, if you can get, just shut the window in the back there, totally cool. He's like, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna tell her all good. So I'm like, cool. So I went up to hell with this. I don't want to wake up my wife. I'm just going to sleep on the couch. Go to sleep. My wife goes, they're so loud next door. She hadn't heard it the first time. Can you go over there? And this is like half an hour later because it was so like almost 2 o'clock. So they did shut the window, though. They did not. Uh, Even though he said they would. Yeah. It, well, I went over Liar. there. They well, just shut no, the window. I went over there, and I think that they shut it on the other side. Because when it, whether he was playing coy, whatever the hell he was doing, I walked Might over again. Drunk. At this point, I'm like, I go, dude. You went on. back. You I went go back. back. I went back. What time are we at? Like 2 now. And I went back, and I'm like, I'm like, the, the window's still open. He said, well, where are you? Are you back there or over there? I'm like, I'm in the back. He's like, oh. And then my wife said it didn't, it didn't happen anymore. But I was like, but the same, going off where you said, you got to go over and have the conversation. And, and, and I recommend doing this on a weeknight as opposed to a weekend, because weeknights, you should be quieter earlier. Like, right. Saturday night, it's tough to confront somebody, because they're Not drunk, they're hammered, they're yeah. high, doing, they're, they're, they're doing all sorts of ecstasy, whatever the it, kids are doing. That's it's so the, true. It's on the landlord. <laughs> It's on the landlord, though. It's like where I live, it's like a residential neighborhood where families and live. Does and your landlord live there as well? No, no landlords live anywhere the, the, around, the, around the neighborhood where I am. There's no landlord that lives in mine, the next door, across okay. the street. No landlord. That was the nice there. thing about that shithole I used to live in. Did you, did you ever come over to the one where. Uh, Blackburn? It, no, before Blackburn, where I slept in the closet. Oh, oh yeah. Um, yeah, the one. Do you want to explain what? that or no? It, it was a survive. studio apartment about as <laughs> like big Harry as... Harry Potter living in the closet. It, it was about as big as this, our podcast studio. But the one perk about it is that it had a... So there's no like separate rooms, just like one big area or one small it was a studio. area. studio. Yeah, but it had a it had a closet that was big enough to where I could shoehorn my twin bed into the closet. 
So I saved a lot of space, and then I also could close the closet when I went to sleep like a vampire. And so I got you the legitimately best sleep ever. had a studio, and you used your closet as your bedroom. Slept in the closet for uh, the better part of three, four years. Yeah, yeah. I helped and you move out of that place. Huh? I helped you move out of that place. Time you to did come help out. me move out of that yeah. place. Uh, the best it's thing about that coming place, out weekend. besides the, besides the fact that I came out of the closet every yeah. morning, is the manager I'm was here. on site. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Good morning. It was, Do I have uh, a spot at the store? <laughs> it was uh, the the manager was on site, so right. I could any problem I had, I could go. Yes. I, I could just be like, "Hey, Rudy, let's take care of this." Rudy, love that. It was Rudy. Yeah. Love it. I am on the opposite end of this, so I I feel I I can't see things clearly because. I'm the person whose door is getting knocked on these oh. days, and it's driving me up a wall because it will be ten o'clock on a weekday, and I will be on volume seventeen watching TV in my living room, and somebody will come and knock on my door. I'm on volume seventeen. I'm I've, under twenty. I feel like I would want to live near you. I I never have anybody yeah. over. I'm never home. I'm always working. Yeah. I'm. W- I'm so nice to my neighbors. I lend them everything. I'm a great person to live near unless you're a curmudgeon. Thin walls? Uh, the same with the top yeah. bottom Family? situation. Families? No, he's a he's a single man. Are oh. you on the top or the bottom? I'm on the bottom. Okay. This is this is my apartment living mm. too, Foxy. Yeah. We we, we, it's we so just frustrating. are watching TV on a Friday night and we have a security guard and the security guard knocks on our door because we're watching The Force Awakens yeah. at ten o'clock at night. And somebody knock and somebody complained on us. It's so anno- like let me live my life. I understand that yeah. you you might have a different schedule than me, but it's ten o'clock and I'm watching a show by myself. Yeah, like you gotta if take, you, you gotta walk think- in and you see that, how do you feel comfortable being like? Can you turn it down, ma'am? What yeah, time? Know. What time was it? Ten o'clock. Uh, okay, look, I'm of two minds this because at at the the Blackburn apartment, I actually was the the aggressor in the situation where I was watching TV. I lived on the second floor, yeah. very thin, everything. Uh, it wasn't a great complex either, but it was nice enough. Thin walls, very thin walls. Thin walls. So I'm watching TV at night, and a very uh, nice guy went to the same gym, Bob. I uh, came up one day, knocked on the door. He's like, hey, can you keep it down? I'm like, yeah, I'm so sorry. The issue for me is that I had that super loud air conditioning unit, uh, the R2-D2 one, the huge yeah, one that Makuga yeah, still uh-huh. has. And and because that was so loud, I had to jack my volume up so right, I could hear. So hear it. Now, back then, I and I told him I was very nice about it, never had another issue. As somebody who's been on the other end of that now, I think you and I think you can mm. both go straight to hell. Mm. Yeah. I do see what you're saying. I think you can I think you can vacate Earth and go right to the seventh circle. Like I legitimately cannot. Ten live o'clock my life. Friday yeah, night, it's Star Wars. Yeah. Depends. Inside a party. Yeah, it enjoy it from hell. It just depends, though. This is the problem. <laughs> here's and here's what I love. So far. About so we have the Airbnb everywhere and we hear all sorts of noises and we're like the cool ones. We're like, who cares? We heard this banging like at night, right up in the corner. The next day, I told you all about tap. this. Very, it was like it's that noise. Yeah. The next day, a Russian ATM scam. Whole the FBI. Oh, you told me about that. Remember yeah, that? Yeah, so yeah, to yeah. hear awesome. this noise. It's great. The next morning, five forty-five in the morning, we're woken up because two doors down, we hear. Right. And we're like, what the hell is going on? We wake up, and I look out, and there are FBI everywhere. Yep. yep. Just like that. That's awesome. Uh, what what ATM is a Russian ATM scam? Ring. There were four apartment, apartments in my wow. complex that were arrested. That's amazing. You gotta move, man. Yeah. Good you know, it's always it's always a thing I, over there at Vantage. And yeah. Star Wars is tough because Star Wars <laughs> are one of those movies where it's like Star Wars is like a great rock and roll band. Like it sounds better when it's loud. Wow. But so how am I getting complained at? I'm not scamming ATMs. Yeah. I'm watching it's, Star Wars. It's not that. It's a matter because the thing is, it's with, with thin walls. But I and, get. I know, but with, yeah. with thin walls and with with the, how. Certain apartment cl- complexes are stacked upon mm-hmm. one another. It's tough because Roxy should be able to watch something at 10 o'clock. She should be able to, but the problem is, depending on the, what this guy's schedule is, you should know where the hell you live, though. Uh, but you let should me, understand. Let me make there... a great point about this, though, is that I think that I think this puts uh, Roxy and Riley in a great situation. And when it happened to me, it put me in a great situation because now, now the bar has been set up here. Now this is where our tolerance is for noise. So if you ever have an issue with said neighbor about 
anything, you have even more credibility to go and be like, hey, remember, I helped you out. Now you, it's yeah, your turn to shut the fuck up. I have no issues with any neighbor I've ever had. I never would say anything. I'm not in Christian's position where I have a one-year-old. No. I can stay up. I can lose sleep. If somebody wants to live their life in their own apartment that they're paying for, I'm not going to go knock on the door. Let them do their thing. I yeah, and it's not that loud, right? You're it, saying, I've told people I have loud. a one-year-old. You should. I, I, and th- it's have a great, really? great piece of it. Yeah. You, you start you start with it. I have a one year old. But what I will say is this is the one one time where there really wasn't something the guy could have done, but he was such a dick about it that I had to make it worse. When I lived at I lived at remember this the place I lived before the one I live at now, right? So we had like a Super Bowl yeah. party there. There was this family that lived right above and they had this two year old that was like sprinting across dealing with that. Uh, that's the other issue I got. Yeah, was sprinting across the living room. How do I handle and it? it? Uh, this is what I did. I don't know if is it up top. Yeah, this is what I did. So all day long, mm-hmm. all day long is what I hear, right? So and it's just bah, 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 bah. so I'm like, what can you do with with this kid? You know. So I walk I walk upstairs to the guy and I and I say and I go listen. Um, I know that it's it, what can you do with with your kid here, but it's like it's it's there's so much banging on the floor like throughout the entire nighttime, afternoon. I was like, is there anything that we can do? And he's just like, nah, literally, <laughs> huh? And I'm like, you can't help me out a little bit. He's like, uh, we'll 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 pay consideration to whatever the hell he said. Right? Yeah. Shuts the door, and never and and then we see him walking through the hallway, and he would just like ignore us completely. And also, I'm like, you know what? It can make things frosty. It started to, and it's one of the reasons why we left. So what do I do? And I know that this is the the wrong thing to do, and I understand that I shouldn't have done this. <laughs> How and, long ago was this? Uh, about five years ago, six years ago. Um, so you're a new father. And Vivian was about my my oldest was probably around a year old. So now I didn't want her to get woken up from this pony running running around. So I took, so we had one of these dodgeballs. So what I would do is, oh, it, and tennis balls, oh, God, do you remember, I remember this? this? And I would, and if yeah. I hear it, I would just fire it up into the ceiling. Oh, Christian. I'm George. telling you that it's not what we should have done. <laughs> oh. You but are Mr. Hackles with the broomstick. One thousand percent. <laughs> Great and friend. I would take that, wow. and like, because because of the way he reacted to it, mm-hmm. and I'm just like, we're not going to have a conversation. I mean, you're going to be a dick about it? So, and, and my wife would be like, stop it. Stop it. And I just couldn't help it. I was like, but and plus the fact I couldn't stand the place, I felt like I was in a little prison. We had to get the hell out of there. We only moved there for one particular Is reason. Is the place near the uh, the wing stop? I think so. The one that's uh, it, it, right across the street. It's it's like yeah, right yeah, 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 yeah. Can you explain what you just said though? One particular reason. It sounded very sneaky. What do you mean? You moved there for one particular reason. Oh no, it wasn't sneaky. Yeah, it was one that, particular reason. The place that the we the place that we lived. Yeah, the place that we lived at beforehand. Uh, was great. We lived there for a while, but once my first daughter was born, there was like paint chips and shit around the. So we needed to get out of there because we didn't want her to like, eat in the paint. It was dangerous to the kids, you know. So we we moved. We just found this one place, lived there for a year until we found another place. I said that's a pretty good particular that's reason. A good reason. Lack, yeah, I, I, I can't paint tell if this yeah. kid actually lives upstairs because I've never heard it up there before. And like this week, it's just been get a dodgeball. It's been wind sprints. I'm thinking about hiring like three or four oompa loompas and having them go up and just knock on the door. What do you get right. when you're kid is all fat <laughs> i would actually love if somebody had enough money to do something like that i got some scary with that, i can do it you should do it just hire like four people to just yeah. go um, love us to come sing to them yeah It'd be really weird um but speaking of my daughter <laughs> listen to what this kid is going to be the death of me i'll tell you that with because the, usually the who, who way are we talking about? my oldest um yeah. she is too smart for her own good this is what she says today or, or yesterday did i didn't tell you this yet mm-hmm so my, my wife takes my young, um, takes my oldest to this fair yesterday. And LA County? I don't know. It wasn't LA County fair. It was, just a, it was like a local fair with you know, Ferris wheels and a whole bunch of things. So my daughter comes up to me and says, Dad, just want to let you know, Mom and I are going to the fair. You're going to be with the baby for an hour or a little while. So make good decisions. As, and I, and I say to my wife, I said, did you tell us this? It's like, no. And then last night, she's like, <laughs> last night she's trying to tell me something. And I'm like, I'm like just go to sleep. Stop. She's like, you don't even know what I was going to say, and you're jumping to conclusions. Wow. She's six. That's, that is true. <laughs> she's six. You were jumping to conclusions. I was. You don't know fantastic. what she was going to say. But it, it's Did you let true. her say what she was going to say then? Uh, no. But it's, it was. It did, jumped yeah. to but, conclusions. But wow, six, I love six. her. And this, this morning she was saying, she's like, that jumps to conclusions all the time. <laughs> Where does that come from? You or Sadie? Reading. She reads four books in a day. She reads a lot, and she's really smart. And it's too. It's 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 going to be. You sk- got to take away the books. Easily going to no be smarter. Yeah, stop the learning. I know. Yeah. She's going to be smarter than I am in in five years. 
That is, uh, yeah, I mean, that that reminds me of how my older sister was, because she was the firstborn of us, yeah. and just very, very quick with the quips from an early age, read all the time, very, you know, I make fun of her now that she peaked at six. Yeah, that's but, I know, right. <laughs> yeah, I just don't, I don't want to jinx it, and she just becomes really dumb afterwards, and it's like, that would be horrible. Can we go back for a second? Because yeah. I remember that I just to bring the conversation to a screeching halt. I You've wrote down a I wrote down a note that I wanted to ask you guys about, and then I forgot to do it. What is it? Are you guys ever nervous when you're doing s- things that you might be embarrassed about later on that you might get recognized because you're celebrities? Like, I wouldn't. First you, of all, I would never use that word. I, to describe well, us. I used it, so you. I did, prefer but like, regional D-list yeah. celebrities. Like, what happens like what? if you are going on to one of these people's doors and they and, and they, they, they open you. the door and they're like Christian Harloff? Right. I've been recognized in my <laughs> building. There's people that live in my building that know you. Yeah. Yeah. See, yeah. They, they've all been very nice. And but but when I'm really? knocking, if I'm knocking on the door like the one right below me, I'm hoping to get recognized because that gives you a leg up. But then, yeah. what if you get a tweet the next day, motherfucking? Well, don't be an asshole. That's then, the but then that's when you. That, that's when now you just have more ammo for yeah. the for the uh, ma- for the apartment managers or landlord or whoever because yeah. now they're harassing you online so too you for about use this. It. And, you yeah, use you should the use fame. it. I would, I would get worried. I would get worried. I get worried about it sometimes. It's helped my driving. It's helped my driving because because yeah. because I'll get I used to have as bad a road rage as as Makuga does. Right. Um. But since we started doing this, I was like, I don't know. A who I'm going to be yelling at. I don't want to see, I don't want anyone like, I have a bad day and it's and there's a video of it now. I'm like, I just. Go around. Yeah. What, what's that from? <laughs> Go around. What's that from? I don't know. That's from you. I know. But what's that from? You called into the Schmoes one time and while you were in the car and you were telling a guy How to go around. How in the world did you have to play? Beardo, that, that's your best word. I just want to make sure Beardo is still like, able to like, go outside and like, have I know. a life. Yeah. And, and not just pull all these pull, clips. That's, but that's me. Isn't yeah. that's that's the that's pull of the century. Yes. Yeah, but to answer, to answer Rossi's around. question, when I, when I was living with uh, with my, my GF at the time, mm-hmm. four weeks. We, we, we broke up. I, I didn't like it as much because because now I'm in an apartment with somebody else and I don't want them to feel right. like, oh, now these people, these strangers who know who this guy is or even know who she was, it's like, that. but now that I live by myself, I'm, I'm fine with people knowing. Yeah. You know? do, how did you come to the fact that they don't, they do know who you are? They leave you messages? They just say, Mark Ellis, we know who you are. We're they, your neighbors. They, they licked my face in an elevator. Good for you. No, they just said, hey, uh-huh. are you Mark from Shmo? <laughs> Yeah. And <laughs> and you said yeah, and they said we live next door, and that didn't freak you out. No, no, they, no. they, they don't live next door. They they live on a different floor. They live and, in this closet, and they're very like our fans. Our fans kick ass, you know. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, so it is. It is in. It is in your your mind. <laughs> to to put a, a cap on all this, Aurelio yeah. Feldman uh, wrote in the chat room yeah. and mentioned that um, after my divorce, my dog was having a bad time without my ex wife at the house, and my neighbor started to have a problem, but never talked to me. I was about to move. And the guy died. Oh, thank you, Aurelia. Thank you. So uh, you know, sometimes work, that, that life like works Mr. out for you. Yeah, that is that was the dude in uh, Mr. What's his name? Friends? Mr. Heckles. That's how he, he yeah. just crapped out. Yeah, he did. And, um, then, and then he to screw them, left his apartment to them, and they had to come clean it right. all out. Yeah, you're uh, gonna do that one day. I probably will. I was. Uh, I did a couple cool things. There was one other thing that my neighbors that I like, the medical students, right? They were. They were. Like, it was like grease lightning. The medical students. I've never heard you like any neighbor. I like the medical students. I've talked about uh, who, them. Which I ones would are they? Yeah, love medical them. students because medical students, when they're not, especially if they're students yeah. and they're in residency, they're working all the time. And when they come home, they want to sleep. So and much cocaine. When I need yeah. a Heimlich, yeah, they're we'll ready. Do it. They know how to do it. What they're are you going to do? Pound on the window? Yeah. Help us. <laughs> I think I have the VO2 and the, the breath capacity. The, where if I start choking on a, on a chicken bone, I, I believe I have the ability so to get, get to the neighbor's house. Well, maybe. Yeah, just run out. But but the neighbor, Wolf. I've talked about them. They did the, the, this is with the party where the guy peed on the mailbox. Like uh-huh. the, but yeah, I like them. And, oh, that was a nice, that well, was you complimenting was, somebody? I'm just telling you who they were. Um, I don't mind. And I said, I t- even the guy who lived there, I told him. And he said, I agree with you. That's the yeah, same yeah, thing yeah, I would have Yeah, that's true. Said. You did say um, that. But... They, uh, they, they were like because of where my daughter's room is, and then they were on the. It was like grease lightning. They were mm-hmm. like working on the car, and I was. For, and it was when my daughter was at the fair with my wife, and I'm like, okay, I got 40 minutes here to play Call of Duty, which I still haven't finished yet. I've been playing it for two years, and <laughs> so I really, really been getting into. It. My wife gives me shit. Why do you want to kill people? I'm like, it's the fucking Germans, and they were terrible people. And I said, and I. And, in, you should in talk World to Papa. Mm-hmm. And so 
I am then sorry the Nazis, and I was and I was <laughs> and I was fighting yeah, them specify. and doing well. I guess I had to specify. Um, and then they were do, again doing grease lightning in the in the in the middle of the day, and the baby wakes up, and that was it. I was pissed off about it, but I realized she slept for about an hour and fifteen. That's all I could do. The game goes fast when you're really into it. But I was playing that. I played started just just started Spider Man, and I it's watched and I watched two movies over the weekend, wow. and, I, and I liked both movies. What were they? Both the movies that I watched, the first one I watched was The Wife with um, Glenn Close. Um, yeah. Highly recommend it. Really good movie. Very well written. She is... What year are we talking? This year. It's oh, wow, I haven't heard of that. All these, Both the movies I'm going to talk about are, are both, were both screeners that came that were potentially... You know, it's like now... The Wife. The screeners that come in now are like the, the lesser known films that they're trying to get before the, the big wave they're of... They're hoping of, for that one or two yeah. Yeah. nomination to come and in. Glenn Close has a shot because she's really good. It's basically she she's married to this Pulitzer Prize winning author who gets the call that he's getting the Pulitzer uh, Surprise. Uh, prize, and then he, he <laughs> that's how they do it. The pull- surprise, you're yeah. getting the prize, <laughs> and the whole and it's about there's there's more you know, Christian Slater's in the movie as well, and Love he's right, yeah he wants to write the biography on the husband, and there's just a mystery of things of how they got together in the first place, of, of what's behind his writing. Um, he's a little bit of a he's a little bit of a not scoundrel, but I mean I guess he cheats on his wife, so he's a bit of a scoundrel. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. What is the definition of a scoundrel? If you're cheating, I think that's you're a scoundrel. it. Yeah. So you're a scoundrel. He's yeah. a scoundrel. But uh, I think you're cheating. You're worse than a scoundrel. I think a scoundrel's like uh, hey. You know, yeah. a scoundrel like goes to Hooters and flirts with the, right. the waste you, staff. A scoundrel could be lovable still. Yeah, a scoundrel could also yeah. not have not be committed to anyone. Scoundrel um, doesn't act on it. Yeah. 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 But anyway, mm-hmm. so it's this whole entire thing. And I thought Glenn Close, from where it went, where, where it starts off, to who you think she is, to ultimately where it ends, to who she is at the end, it was, uh, it was a very well written, acted piece. Did you know that in 1997, Glenn Close was this close to becoming the president of the United States? I did. If Harrison Ford doesn't make it off that plane, yeah, it's true. She's next up. She didn't talk about her enough in that movie. She was good in that. She used um, to date, uh, or she was married to my brother's uh, guitar teacher. Really? Wow. For how long? What a weird pull. I <laughs> didn't get into it. Didn't get an ask? Yeah. Um, oh. And then the other one I watched was all about Nina. Mary Elizabeth Winstead. Big fan. Well, who's yelling? Oh, Copster loves it? Copster, get on the Copster mic. Copster loves No, Mary I just love Mary Elizabeth Then you need to see this movie. This okay. is the best performance she has ever done. Uh, Ooh. She was really good Scott in Pilgrim. The Thing. She's great in Fargo. This is the best performance of her career. She was Abraham Lincoln's wife when he was killing vampires? I'm telling you. She, uh, is, she is so good in this film. The movie itself is fine. Um, it's about a stand-up comedian. Wait, I blacked out. What was it called? It's called uh, All About Nina. All About Nina. And it, I haven't heard of this one either. Common, this is so weird. It's her, Common. Jay Moore's in it for like a, a second. But it's about this comedian living in New York. She gets herself involved with this uh, married dude. You know, and it's like she's like, Is that Common? That's a no, scoundrel. No, no. And then she's like, I'm getting the hell out of here. She's like, I'm going to L.A. I'm gonna, my, her agent gets her like this Comedy Central-ish type show, mm-hmm. right? To where she got a chance. Oh, uh, uh, Bo Bridges is in it as well. Well, Bo Bridges. Who's, who's yeah. Bo Bridges? Is. Oh, who is he in the movie? N- no, I can't picture who that is. Bo Bridges, Jeff Bridges' brother. You've huh. seen him in a billion things. He no, was in. Did Jeff you watch? Bridges. Did you watch the uh, um, fabulous Baker Boys? I was going to oh, no, say no, no. no. TV. I'm going TV. Did no. you, what was the one? Bloodline. Bloodline. Did you see? Did you watch Bloodline? No. You didn't watch Bloodline. No. Can you guys pull? Oh. Yeah. You know Bo Bridges. Yeah. You know, I've never seen this person. What? I've never seen this. You've person. You've never seen Bo Bridges. All right, Who's fine. this person? Bo Bridges is great. And Jeff, Jeff Bridges is amazing in everything. He had a brother, and I had no idea. Yeah, Bo and, Bridges I, and I is liked like the name Bo Bridges better than Dude, Jeff Bridges. He, he, the literary. What about his, their dad? Lloyd Bridges, airplane. Yeah, hot sauce. Hot sauce. Yes. Hot yeah. Sauce. Yep. yeah, legendary. Wow, who is Bo legendary. Bridges? Wow, I, I, you it's get... never happened to you where you just miss somebody. Here's exactly who Bo Bridges looks like. <laughs> Bo Bridges is either the neighbor you want. When you knock on their door and yeah. you're like, hey, can you turn it down? Ah, sure, man. Or Bo Bridges, if he's going to come complain to you about something, you want it to be Bo Bridges because you're going to be able yeah. to have a civil understanding. Uh, if, I don't know. As of recently, some of his roles have been pretty menacing, especially like Bloodline, right? Well, who is he in this? Is in, he a bad guy? No, no, no. He's like an exec. He's like an exec. Um, but the movie itself, anyway, so she goes she goes to, to L.A. She's just living there and she gets into a relationship with Common. And she's like really... Again, promiscuous has had this just not looking for a relationship. She's just focused on the career, but she's fucked up, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Good and, for her. And as she's going through it, like she has this relationship with him. They have really good chemistry, but she just go. I mean, the jokes. It's funny. I was talking to Sandy about it too. I've, we both have seen comedians like her. 
before to where it's like not necessarily my type of humor, but powerful on stage, good, um, good presence. You buy her as a as a I buy her as a comedian. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I didn't love the set, but it, but it was a solid set. Mm-hmm. It just wasn't a set that I would laugh at. But I okay. and I've been in room five and comedy store watching sets like this going. But I also understand how these types of sets would become successful. Gotcha. Who's it for? Um, Is it dirty? Very. It's filthy. It's blue. Yeah, and I think that it's it's just talking about undercarriages. Yes. Yeah, I mean that's that's so the area it's blue. between it's your very, like penis and butt. Yeah, no. What's an yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. I it's mean, the taint. The undercarriage is kind of the whole chassis we're right. talking about. The whole kit, <laughs> kit and caboodle, right. as they used to say. <laughs> right. Yeah, but um, now I get it. But it's like it really it's the is the whole golf course. There's different landscaping techniques for the for the rough yeah. versus the fairway versus the green. Poor it's a, Bow Bridges. <laughs> it's a drama though. The movie more than anything else, it's a drama, and she really gets to a place that I, I at one point I'm looking. I'm like, wow, she is just bringing it. Like she has this one emotional. She's had a lot of emotional scenes, but there's one particular emotional scene in the movie and I'm like this is going to be so ignored this year and it shouldn't be she is so good in the movie the movie is called All About Nina and it is a movie that for her alone I highly recommend it to cops for being a, a Mary Winstead award Elizabeth mm-hmm. Winstead thank you um, go and see her in this movie it is, it is if you care about like the performances of, of Oscar season as we get closer like who you think should be nominated who you think should because there's a lot of times that people like my mother-in-law which drives me nuts if we're watching oh, the Oscars what if Pat was the mastermind of the squirrels she probably is but what she would run around with the squirrels I want you creatures that's an M. Night twist attack. right there I quick like that. jump through the trees um <laughs> But works. <laughs> what she does, it drives me crazy. When some, when no, some, the, children. All, the, all these she shows calls are nominated. Them yeah, she calls them children. All of them are nominated. These <laughs> movies are nominated, and she'll go, "That one doesn't deserve to win." I'm like, "Have you seen it?" No. Well, and she'll watch. She had seen one of them. Same thing she with Grammy. Against, it drives same me crazy. Same thing with Grammy. Yeah. So watch so the annoying. movies. Watch and understand. Like have a have a like, know what you're talking about. Because that's the thing. If you want to see it, you want to be like, really invested when these awards come around. If you're watching this show and you like the movie, movie talk, you know, then that's see this movie because she should be recognized. For I, I want to see it. Let's run through the lineage of stand up yep. in film. Uh, punchline, obviously, all time uh, classic. Yeah, yeah. Um, but as far as the portrayal of stand up goes, Sally Field. Tom Hanks. Yeah, I don't think that was. I, Wayne. Like Steve, Steve Byrne was saying they don't have lockers in comedy clubs. You know no. what I mean? It's like, come on. No, I know. Uh, then Mr. Saturday Night with Billy Crystal. Yeah. Harrowing look into the future of what my destiny is. When you look at funny people, um, I think that was a pretty good portrayal yeah, of stand up. Yeah, when they were there, when they were doing it. Right. Yeah. And then you have something like this where, like, when I see a movie about stand up, I'm always a little hesitant because I just, I might not feel like watching it. Yeah. Same thing with Marvelous Miss Maisel. I know that's a great show. I know she is great on stage and the cast is fantastic. It's just like, uh, I, I'd probably rather watch live sports. But with this, if it's a movie, two hours, it's, I think it sounds like something It's an I might hour 40. Make it's the an hour 40. And it really isn't mm. as much about stand up as it just happens to be what she does. Yeah. I mean, the, you know, the movie is obviously her really trying to get that big gig, make sure that she's that she's successful in this job and fighting through it. But and it's really about her coming to grips with who she is and getting over all these personal demons that she has. You want to talk about controversial opinions within your own family? Uh-oh. My mom saw a movie this weekend. My mom goes to a lot of movies. Okay. She loves the movie. She loves Oscar season. She always wins her uh, her box Paul. Oscar right. pool. She saw a film this weekend. Uh huh. Did not care for it. What was it? What movie was it? Last Jedi. No. Oh. It, was, it was in Born. theaters. In theaters. Oh, Star yeah. is Born. First, no, First Man. Oh. Yes. Was bored with it. Yeah. Wow, it yeah. did not do well. This not weekend, just bored right? with it. Hot takes. Oh, wow. oh boy. Hot. My mother-in-law, I don't think liked it either. But like, I don't I'm think she realized what she was watching. Like, I'm with that storyline. I, 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 because we, we were, we were texting back and forth, and now when our family communicates, we do it exclusively on the family text chain. Nobody individually <laughs> texts each other anymore, uh-huh. unless you're like, can you believe this other bitch said? Right. So now it's the family's just witnessing this thing go back and forth, and she, she had a big problem with the fact that it wasn't just the flag not being planted. She thought that it was, it wasn't focused enough on the space race, and she would, kept reminding me. She's like, "Well, Junior, you were not alive at that time," yeah. which is totally fair because yeah. I wasn't. So, but the movie's called First Man. I, I told her that. Yeah. I tried to make that. She thought that Gosling. She said the only good part about the movie, in her opinion, was Claire Foy. She thought Claire Love Foy was Claire great. Foy. Oh my god, that was the like, opposite of what I said. You did not like. Claire she didn't Foy. like Claire Foy. I, I, I didn't <coughs> love her in this. Yeah. No. So good. So I told her, yeah, because I, cause I, I'm pretty sure I was watching First Man. And I was like, I was like, I'm pretty sure this is a movie my dad would have loved. Yeah, 
And so I was shocked to hear that my mom had disdain for it. Hmm. So your mom, your mom. Uh, bottom line is, I need a place to stay for Christmas. All right. <laughs> we well, got I mean, into it. Want to well, come to Boston? I, I can see this though. I think we've gone. We, this has happened in the past to yeah. where there are certain movies to where this movie we said it in the review. It's a slow burn. There's no doubt about it. This mm-hmm. movie's a slow burn. It's too. And it, I've heard a lot but of people. Once you launch, nice. Two twenty. It's about see myself out. It's about two twenty. The movie, right? It's long. Yeah, that is long. And I, I'm okay with it, but I can also understand. The, I could see the critique of people coming out and going. I felt found it was dull. Mm-hmm. I don't really side on the fact of people want because 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 Snyder was the same way. He wanted more to do with the race and 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 it's a different movie, right? And the the crew and learning more about them is that it focuses in on Armstrong. Mm-hmm. And his wife and his family, because the movie's called First Man. It's about the story of Neil Armstrong. <laughs> yeah, and on, but on the family text chain, the thing that Captain, because my mom and I love each other, and so we're just we're kind of right. joking by yeah, the yeah. end. My uncle, who owns Ico's Record Store in York, Pennsylvania, if you want to go, he chimed in at the end, and he's like, "I don't know who I agree with because I haven't seen the movie, but we can all agree the whole thing was a hoax." Yeah. <laughs> you should tell Buzz that. Scary. See what Buzz says to <laughs> him. Yeah, punch him in the jaw. Do not uh, tell Buzz Aldrin it was a hoax. Yeah. Well, yeah, that was. Uh, but anyway, the, that movie. What, you said it didn't do well. I thought. Did okay. I it, know it, I, it did, did not, not do nearly well. yeah. really as well. It came in third. I think it was seventeen million dollars. Yeah. Well, let's look at this box office. Here's uh, a box talk office. about the headlines that you just stole. Failure to launch. Uh, right. Does not blast off yeah. every every site. Which is crazy. So look, Venom. Venom did thirty five off of what last week was eighty. Ooh-wee. Still beat a star is born. Oh man. Oh yeah. Well, dude, but it a star only is born had a more, great second Fifty five percent drop. Yeah, fifty five percent drop. That's a great drop. Yeah. Um, star is born. To, what's that? Done? Almost 100 million so far. First man, 16, yeah, 16 million. It's kind of stinky. How much did that movie cost to make? 50 million? It didn't cost as much as you might think for a million. big movie like that yeah. from an effect standpoint. Yeah. But it, it's just, there's a lot of buzz around that movie. Is it going to affect Oscar run? Because they do take, people don't realize it, they do take in consideration uh, box office a lot of times. If it's a bomb, is that going to hurt it? I think. Yes. You think so? Yeah, I do. I, I think you got to see what else comes out and how well those yeah. movies do. Because A Star is Born is, is clearly going to have a very nice run at the yeah. box office. And Bohemian Rhapsody from people are saying, I mean, this office, the people that, like, I don't know if there's an embargo on it, but it's, yeah. it's got good buzz. That, yeah, uh, they are, buzz. but I do wonder if the Brian Singer uh, effect is going to harm that the same way that the disaster artist was affected because of accusations coming out at the worst possible time. In for regards that to production. nominations and stuff, yes, but the thing is, too, the difference here, I think that you pr- you're not going to see a, a best director nomination no. for him, no matter what. It doesn't matter if it's you the just best director. Separate that. He's from not everything getting it. Else. best pictures possible. Um, yeah, you know, and best actor best possible. Actor. Again, I have to see the movie. I haven't seen it yet, but that's. I've seen forty minutes of it. And you, and are you allowed to talk about the forty that you saw? Did you like? It's, Did you... it's dope. Yeah, that's what I heard. From, just, from what I've seen, of, like, I, I get the and I actually I, I get that people want to see the musical performances at the Oscars. But can yeah. we have like we'll do the Star Is Born stuff. We'll do whatever other music is necessary. I think we just have Queen just come on and just just kick ass. Yeah. For a couple songs. Rami Malek, man, woof, yeah. It's really good. I, I, Rami Malek as Freddie Mercury. With with the rest of the band, I, I like that I idea. Have, I love I'm so cool. torn though because Adam Lambert yeah. wouldn't like it. This is every sporting event you've ever he's been. He's great too. Is that not in the movie? He's in the movie. But, he, yeah, yeah, he's great. Yeah. Uh, I I just feel like we'll see. I mean, Brian Singer obviously Instagram that thing today. We don't know what is to come. Right. Maybe that explain will affect that, it. Explain that in clip so notes. Bri- Brian Singer Instagram saying that he knows Esquire is going to post an article about them. He's, they've been doing research on him for a while and he was trying to get ahead of it by yeah. saying that they it is false. Whatever they're going to post, which we don't know, is false and they are after something that is not accurate. Yeah, Here it is. As I've known for some time that Esquire magazine may publish a negative article about me. They have contacted my friends, my colleagues and people I don't even know. In today's climate where people's careers are being harmed by mere accusations, what Esquire is attempting to do is reckless disregard for the truth, making assumptions that are fictional and irresponsible. This article will attempt to rehash false accusations and bogus lawsuits. This article will misuse quotes from sources that will claim to have intimate knowledge of my personal life and will also attempt to establish guilt by association simply because of people I've either known or met in the past. They will be attempting to tarnish a career I've spent 25 years to build. And incidentally, this article has been conveniently timed with the release of my film, Bohemian Rhapsody. And I am immensely proud of this film and everyone involved. I will comment further on this if necessary. But I will agree with this on one thing that this article is definitely going to come out 
to hit Bohemian Rhapsody, which I think Absolutely, is... Absolutely, after he was named yeah. the sole director on it, and yeah. Dexter, or whatever his name is, was is not being credited for the film. Right. And then he just got a like a $10 million deal or whatever to direct Red Sonja right. Right. Yeah. for Millennium. So, I mean, look, it's... The guy it clearly he has every right to go onto social media and say these things. Yeah. I'd like to check out the article because I, I t- in this case, it seems like a lot of those accusations, there's a lot of accusations a lot. from a lot of time. Yeah. So well, I've heard stories about him for years. Yeah. Years. But, years. And, and you, but you, like, I've spent 25 years building this career they're trying to take down. It's like, well, what else were you doing in the 25 years? Right. You know? Yeah. Right. Uh, so I wonder what kind of effect that will have on the movie. And a lot of people were tweeting today because it was the number one tre- trending thing on Twitter, at least for me. I still don't know how that works. If it different things, they to different know you better than you know yourself. Yeah, yeah, bring, up, bring up Hacksaw Ridge so for a second. Bring up Hacksaw Ridge. People, the, the box office. half the people were saying they weren't going to go see this movie anymore, and half the people were. Now, whether or not that's actually realistic, right. we'll see. I'm curious to what Hacksaw Ridge did. And that was what last year or the year before. Hacksaw Ridge did two years ago. Hacksaw years Ridge ago. did decent business, I believe, and yeah. held up week to week. Made okay. over 175 million worldwide. So you 40 know, mil budget. And it's, yeah. Yes, I think it's easier to separate the director, like what, so what you were saying. talking and about, like yeah. if Mel Gibson was the star of Hacksaw Ridge, and I'm not even equating Mel, Mel Gibson yeah, with Brian Singer. I know, Frank I know you're saying Singer, the con- controversy. Sure. Controversy. I think that with the director, it's easier <laughs> to, to distance yourself from a marketing perspective leading up to the movie, yeah. because people who are on Twitter all the time are clearly going to know, and those are the people that are going to use that platform to react one way or another. Most My mom probably has no idea. She just wants to go see the right. Queen movie. Right. Every I wish that movies would release, and obviously they don't for a reason. But every movie is different with how people are getting paid. Is it points on the back end? Are they getting paid up front? Yeah. I wish people would release that so you know when you're buying a ticket to a movie where your money is going. Right, who you're supporting? <laughs> you know, you, you yeah. should be able as a ticket buyer to be like, I don't want any of this money go to, to go Singer. to Mr. Singer. Right. Yeah. I want it all to go to the nice robot. Boy. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's a good point. I think it's also the reason why they were trying to. They they knew what they had inside of this movie. They knew how good it was. If you believe all the buzz that's coming around it, right? Is that they got rid of him. They got they asked him to leave earlier because they knew they wanted to push it. Look at last year, the Kevin Spacey thing with uh, what, was mm-hmm. the, what was the movie? The, all the money in the world. All the money in the world, which I still haven't seen. Uh, all, Neither have I. Yeah. Really good. It was yeah, yeah. all the money in the world. I heard they it was back, awful. I thought it was really good. I've heard mixed things. They yeah. got well. They got they had they made a move quick with that one because they didn't want Ridley Scott and everybody else, Mark Wahlberg and everyone involved, um, to get hit. You know, so they made a move and recast the guy within whatever it was. I'm still curious. If they would have released it as it was, would it had it done any different? But it, it would not have done nearly. Probably worse, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, all the money. The, the only reason it got the nomination of the Golden Globes is because of that what move. They did yeah, um, fifty six mil. Yeah, they, they, they got worldwide. Christopher. Oof. They got Christopher Plummer in there, but that movie. I mean, you saw what Kevin Spacey's other movie did. When, remember that movie Made came out? Made $130 or something, yeah. right? What was it? Kevin Spacey was, was in a movie. That much. And, and they really, they're like, well, shit, we got this movie. We made it before the guy's stuff get. So released they, it. they had yeah. to release it, and it made your joke. It made a Snickers bar. It's funny, though, yeah. because, well, look, we because that it's just a dirty word right now, Kevin Spacey, right? Because even like when Schmodown questions come up that Sklisky wrote like years ago, <laughs> we'll meet, Miles and I look at each other like, no, we're not going to ask. We'll this ask one. a usual suspect's we, question we still, yeah, even we, though you got Brian Singer, yes. Kevin Spacey. Does that happen to you guys a lot? It, Kevin Spacey, we try to avoid. Franco? Brett Ratner. No, no Franco, no, Franco right now. I mean, I mean, yeah, not not Franco. The ones that we like, Brett Ratner. Louis, yeah, we'd avoid Louis. Um, uh, yeah, Spacey's the most obvious yeah. one. Any Harvey films? Not Harvey films, because again, that's the same thing. It's, it's like, like, be like who greenlit? Yeah, Goodwill you, Hunting. You would never <laughs> have any, you, you would ask, you'd ask no Tarantino questions then. If yeah. you get rid of all, I'm just no, no, I'm serious. It's no, it's a good question, but I'm just saying, we we'll look at each other sometimes. Like, ooh, maybe we shouldn't want. We don't want to bring that up. Let's bring that. <laughs> That's that why topic we had up. backup questions. That's it. So, and speaking of which, there was an interesting. I want to get your take on this because you're a sports guy, and you too, because you you've been. Um, Really getting into the showdown lately and kind of the sport. It's I'm a become. huge sports fan. I love pro wrestling. And I want to let people know, by the way, that Mark and I, our, our match now is available to, to all everybody. to all patrons. Yeah. So if you're to a, all the patrons. Yes. If you're a dollar, if you're a dollar get on patron there. and above, you get it. So you can get because avail with the first two weeks it's only the ten dollar tier. Now it's available to everyone. So from you can go introduction to, the, yep. to closing credits yep. plus. Kick ass announcers. Is Patreon. it worth it? Com slash money. It was a good match. Yeah, it was a good, good match. Um, Patreon.com slash Schmodown. Go over there if you want. But there's an interesting. There's, I was listening to the Schmodown rundown, and as we are getting closer to the end of the season now, and the tur- thank you, and the tournament is is coming. Roca and Bibiani playing for the title. There's a lot of stuff kind of happening. The big event, the spectacular, is going to be in December. 
there's a lot as we lead up to this thing. So the conversation on the Schmodown Rundown with Frank and uh, Brad Gilmore, they start talking about like Player of the Year already. Mm-hmm. And, as, and so there's a conversation that's coming out with Player of the Year. Sam Christmas! Levine. All right, enough, enough. Sam Levine, Sam Levine, who was 5-0, and oh, had two, had, had won both titles, won the team titles, won the singles title, and then left. Yeah. Mid-season, right? 5-0, and oh, though. And then Rachel Cushing was in the conversation, who was 7-2 and two across three different divisions, right? Mm-hmm. And then you got, if we'll see what happens with Roka, you look at Bibiani with Free For All. There's uh, Mark Andreco, Ethan Irwin, Mara Kanopic, who just in one division. So the question is, all these, Frank and the crew made a big push for Rachel Cushing, um, who I love and is one of my favorite people and a dear friend of mine, too. I think I'd like to see if Rachel defends the title the team titles that spectacular. That will make all the difference. I think that makes all the difference. How do we? How, how do we do the player? The it's it's not like which I think is is kind of a, a like the NBA for example, yeah. and the NFL I think does this too. They give out their season awards before the playoffs have reached their conclusion. So the regular season MVP may have a shit playoff run. Right. At, do we do that including the spectacular? It's the whole season, yeah. It's the whole. It's it's like the, yeah, including okay. the spectacular yeah. for sure. It's yeah, the whole then season. then these conversations are fun to have. Obviously, yeah. it's premature. It's speculative because we don't know what's going to happen. Bibiani, At, Bibiani, and Roca is something that we need to settle. Huge because Bibiani, if Bibiani, who was in the free for all, lasted twenty two rounds out of, in itself, right? Then he wins against Snyder. Then he beats Andreco. Then if he defends against Roca and then defends against the winner of the tournament at spectacular, I think how do you not give it to, but to Bibiani? It, it, there is something to be said for you're talking about player of the year yes so rachel cushing like you said three different three divisions three different divisions divisions. of dominance right well no one and one in singles she was one and one singles she went um i think two and one in inner geekdom and then she went four and oh and won the team titles i yeah i I might uh, i might have an easier time with the the bibiani or the levine argument based on based on previous seasons when we were still building up the team in Inner Geekdom, but the fact that Inner Geekdom is such a monster now right. of its own, and the fact that people are so much more tested in each division, the fact that you can go, I'm going to go kick ass in this one. Today, yeah, no, there's no doubt about it. And then I'm going to go it. over here. And then I'm going to get a teammate, and then we're going to win and a And you're lot. talking about Rachel now. Talking about Rachel. I am. Yeah. I, I think as, if it ended today... I think I think Rachel's a no brainer. I really? think I think we need to it's see what's on that. Opic, I think Marikan Opic has a bigger has a better place because Marikan Opic it was an unknown wins five matches clearly rookie of the wins year, the title right? beats clear, well so far but beats Inman who was unbeatable beats right. Rachel Cushing right beats Mike Kalinowski. Right. Now that's that's in one division. Yeah, only but, one. But that's one division. But that's and five straight matches when no one knew who she was. The other thing that I think we have to take into consideration here is not just how many questions you're answering right, how many people you're beating, but the entire game. If we're talking about Player of the Year, look at everything that Rachel puts into her presentation Prepar- and preparation and preparation. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, and also everything she's overcome. You guys know she gets really. She's done these live events. Yeah. That's like a huge. And it's not in her comfort zone. And it's not yeah. in her comfort zone. And the. Between, like you talked about, preparation, and then on top of that, having all of these victories, and then if she does do well at Spectacular, come on. Right. I mean, it's, look. Is it's, it a question Frank, anymore? Frankie's argument, I read that, yeah. and completely swayed Which is from what, all give me, that. Give me a little bit of what it was. It was like, Summarize it. It, it was we the don't stats. We read, yeah. Riley. The stats through across three leagues, team. Yeah. Her stats are, are unbelievable. Then the pre- presentation, like, he made a great, he made me laugh. It's like... Sam Levine walks up, nice blazer. You know, he walks out, looks looks sharp. Rachel puts in this effort. And yeah. you know my I, theatrics I think that's, in the past, yeah, too. I, think I love that. I think that comes down to entrance of the year and heel and face of the year. It's, but overall, it's all relevant. A total package here. Mm-hmm. I'm She's of the gone year. Yeah. all the way to a title run, singles. Best picture. Team yeah. title. Almost inner geekdom. It's like it's this domination. I understand the weeks. argument for her. I just think, yeah. again, if you look at what Sam Levine did this season, where he won both titles. Here's the thing, and, Sam. And, and they took but out the Patriots. But is Sam even going to fly in from Florida the to Sam collect did our match? Player the Sam retired mid mid season. We had to, right. we had to book him a first class right. ticket and that's round a huge trip. Thing. I would put in Mara as well. Absolutely. Yeah. I, could, I'm, be I don't put Mara could be Bibiani Roca. Could be Bibiani. You don't put her in the no, really. I don't put her in the disagree. running. I oh. think she's effing amazing, and I think she's been such a blessing to this league, and she's so talented. But it's one area. 
I it's mean, one area. Yeah, but to see what I, I you think do. She, I think she's certainly in the running. Yeah, she, I, she, I think she's certainly worthy of a nomination. Yeah. She, um, she hits. But, I mean, she hits the tournament, wins yeah. it, and then beats Inman at the live event in within, one area. Yeah, but within four months, that's just, a, that's a, that's a hard player. I, I think that we're looking at it in, in terms of of NFL, it's offensive and defensive player of the year. But in basketball, you have to play two ways. So sometimes the MVP is rewarded because somebody's just lights out offensively, right. like Russell Westbrook averaging a triple double. That's amazing. I tend to go with LeBron or Jordan or somebody like Kawhi Leonard or Tim Duncan, who, when they won MVPs, clearly are able to dominate yeah, offensively and defensively. There's no doubt of what she's able to do. And, 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 and the other thing that we're not taking into consideration, I announced this over the weekend so I can announce it here. The, 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 this is how the singles tournament is going to go. Because the singles tournament, whoever wins that, could also be in mm, contention, yeah, too. That's, that's a huge So one. on this bracket, you have Andraco versus McWeeny. Then Clark Wolf will play the winner of this little mini gauntlet, which right now is Ben Bateman versus Janine the Machine, mm -hmm. Lon Harris versus Josh McCuga. Winner of that will play Clark Wolf. <laughs> oh, Clark's um, scary. Yeah, she She's is. A beast. On the other side, Clark's, you've a, got Clark's a fantastic player. Yeah. Too. Dan Merle versus Stacey Howard, and then Ethan Irwin versus newcomer Chance Ellison, who grabbed the magic number. So whoever what, do, what is the magic number? There were, there were five competitors that were put into who could qualify to get into right. this thing. So basically, one person got the magic number that was automatically was part of the part of the seven. Um, the kid got the kid lucky. got it, and now and now these the other ones have to battle it you out. You didn't set that up. I swear, no. This was this no, one. Was this, yeah. Look, the anarchy one was yes. We, we there was there was what? half what? anarchy. Half of it was what random. Did you half wait, of it was wait, what? what? Exactly. Really? So I, Beard, can we for, get some breaking news? Yeah, but tell for, it to Mike. He doesn't know it's a setup. Uh, but but as far as as far as this goes, this was all we just picked the numbers out of the hat, the things out of the hat. Um, but anyway, I'm curious what people think though too. Is like because the the debate the debate inside of the Facebook group was was big. I mean, Sam Levine was had like 400 votes, and he was he yeah. was the, the front runner. And I think Rachel was four in this in the one that I had. I think the second uh, I think Canopic was two. But, really? Yeah. What do you? What, what Riley? What are they saying? Uh, yeah. A lot of people are are looking at Mara. Impressive. Yeah. Totally impressive. But so impressive. Uh, rookie of the year. Exactly. Yes. Rookie of the and year then for sure. Player of the year. Um, you know, I'm seeing a lot. Basically, I'm going to sum it up. Is whoever the singles yeah. is holding the belt, whether it's a Bibiani, whether it's a Roca, whether it's a whoever from the spectacular whoever. should be considered. Yeah. Sam, I'm seeing, is not getting a lot of respect. Wow. I, wa I watch he, one of the... you got to respect, though, what he, he got, did, but I it's would, been so I would long. absolutely put him up there. Yeah. But the fact that he walked away. The fact that he walked away is like somebody did a great, like, what if LeBron just walked away mid-season? Right. And I'm like... Yeah, but, but, but there's, yeah, it's just, yeah. there's difference. I love the guy, After the guy winning won, the championship, The guy though. defended the title twice against Rachel Cushing and against Clark, Clark Wolf. Yep. And then won the team championship against the longest reigning and champions. And defended in these And I've never seen anybody study harder than he he's, studies. He, 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 he's, 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 he's great, but he's not competing at the Spectacular? No, he's out. For yeah, I, I think this is and just... It, it's the equivalent of like a stand-up comic like taping their special. Yeah. And, and you go to see a special, you expect to see an hour of killer material. Right. And it's like he did 15 minutes. That was it's it was true. 15 yeah. minutes I think of it's murdering. A murdering material. Sam's the timing of it. If yeah. this happened at the end of the year and he did his run and then the season ended yeah. and he retired, I think it'd be a different conversation. All right. Well, we're going to have a different conversation when we get back from the break. Uh, Good we segue. Have, thank you. We have a bunch of things that we're going to talk about um, when it comes to clickbait, something that happened to me over after Jedi Council that I didn't understand with some reasoning that we're going to get into of what makes Actual clickbait, clickbait. We're going to talk about that. There's some movie news. Did you just tease a clickbait conversation? Yes. Yeah. So that's clickbait. So go ahead and do that. Make sure, do what? Go to the Facebook group, by the way, the Schmodown Facebook group, Movie Trivia Schmodown Facebook group. Join today. There's 17,000 people in there today. Great conversations happening. Be a part of those polls. And we will see you after the break. there no it's not late to the party that's actually from obi-wan kenobi you didn't know that well you should and now you do jedi council what is it it's about star wars obviously it's jedi council every week the latest and greatest in star wars movie news myself and ken knapsack that's right the pit boss himself we have a guest on and we talk about everything happening in the world of star wars if it's the movie news the tv news canon news comic books games and then we take questions from you guys on facebook and twitter it's a lot of fun we've been doing it for a couple of years now i'm still excited talking about it the fan base is coming together again i believe it is i think it is i hope it is and we're talking star wars so we like you that's right 
right, all of you, if you're not a fan of Star Wars, come on over and join us every Thursday for Collider Jedi Council here on Collider Video. And we have an Apple podcast feed or podcast one, wherever you want to go if you listen to podcasts. And not only do you get Collider Jedi Council every week on Thursday, The Rule of Two with Mark Fernandez and Mark Riley, that's on every week. I believe it drops on Wednesday. It's on one of these days. It's a good show. You should listen to it. I like it. I listen to it. I haven't listened to it once. Hey, everyone. Mark Ellis here. You know, when I'm not trying to clone dinosaurs or drinking in my neighborhood watering hole, I am probably hosting Collider Movie Talk. It's a flagship show here at Collider. I like to say that because I'm the host of it. It's every day, almost. It's four days a week, which is still pretty good, above 50%. You can watch it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. 4 p.m. Los Angeles time is when we do it. It's live, so you can participate in the live chat room. Go ahead and give us your thoughts on every story we have coming, because it's all the latest movie news of the day. Who did what at the box office? What horrible red box movies Bruce Willis signed on to? The DC, the Marvel, the Star Wars, the Lord of the Rings. Are they making new? I think they're, it's a TV show, and we still might talk about it anyway, because we love movies around here. It's myself and an expert expert panel of guests, including John Roca, Perry Nemiroff, Jeff Snyder, and other noted noters of note. You guys are going to love this show, and we take your live Twitter questions at the end of the show at Collider Video. You can always use the hashtag Collider Movie Talk to get in touch with us, so subscribe right here to Collider Video. Check out Movie Talk, and check out the Collider Movie Talk podcast feed. We have a podcast feed now. You don't have to look at this handsomeness. You can just listen to it, whether you're driving to work, whether you're driving from work, or you don't have a job, but you have a basement and ears. You can listen to Collider Movie Talks feed. You can get it at Apple Podcasts or on iTunes. You also get Mailbag. That's the show that's hosted by Perry Nemeroff a lot more professionally than I run this pirate ship. That's our weekend show where she takes your letters. I don't know if you write them or you email them. You have to ask her. And Afterthoughts, hosted by Ryan Snelling and Jay Williams. I almost said Ryan Williams and Jay Snelling. Would anybody have known the difference? I certainly would. I would have felt bad about it because I'm a nice person, and that's why I host Collider Movie Talk. Check it out in video form or on our podcast feed. Hi there. I see that you're enjoying Collider Live. After this show, why not check out Collider Games, where we play, well, games. We review games. We talk about things, anything that's going on in the gaming world, our opinions, news, all kinds of stuff. So check it out. If you like it, stick around and subscribe. Hey everyone, John Roca here, one of the hosts for Collider Sports Time. That's our new show there on the Collider Sports Network. It's our flagship show, just like Collider Movie Talk. We get on, talk about a bunch of sports issues of the day, and what is burning up social media. What topics are burning up social media? That's what we do on Collider Sports Time. I'm joined by my top 10 co-host, Matt Nost. Me and him, we welcome a bevy of guests every week to talk about NFL the Major League Baseball playoffs, NHL, and the NBA, which is starting up soon. We're going to talk about that. We also get into UFC stuff, college football, all the stuff that's happening in the world of sports. We're going to cover it on Collider Sports Time. And we're going to take the time to break it all down and give our opinions and our unique takes and unfiltered thoughts on what we think about the sports news of the day. So don't forget to join us every week on Monday for the Collider Sports Time show on the Collider Sports Network. And don't forget to subscribe on the Collider Sports Network on YouTube and on the Collider Sports Podcast feed. We're going to bring you all kinds of stuff. Hope to hear from you soon. Hey, everyone. I'm Scott Movie Manson. Just to let you know, if you already don't, every Friday here on Collider Video, I host a weekly film review series called Movie Review Talk. The title says it all. Every week, I'm joined by two guest critics of my choice, and they're never the same. We review the new films. We pick something that's streaming that you might not know about, but is really great. And we pick a Blu-ray for something that you might have missed in theaters. It is fun. It is infectious. It is the Citizen Kane of movie review shows. And it's only right here on Collider with this guy, Scott Movie Mance, Mr. Movie Release Dates himself. Check it out every Friday at 10 a.m. AM Pacific only on Collider Video. Welcome back to Collider Live. And this is driving me nuts. Riley, what is this? Oh, no, this is First Man. This is First Man. Am I right? <laughs> yes. This is First Man, right? Yeah, okay. Wow. Welcome back the to Collider Live. Divided Thank the you. Ellis family. We're going to do that. People like that that bit we did last week with yeah. the guests and the scores. Oh, I hate it. You did? You like almost you won. Got us a, I did. It also win. got us a copyright strike. So. It did? Yeah. Oh. Uh, <laughs> 
I, no, I, not a strike. I caused it. Not, I got reported a it. Strike. You got a strike. It's a stern or you, warning. Or yeah, it got, it got the monetization that the, we couldn't monetize the episode, right? That's what it was. But it, it look, it plays good audio wise. So <laughs> Ugh, I hate it. Right. Anyway, um, you did well. I hate it. You did really good. You did well, really kind of, that kind well. of stuff stresses yeah. me out. Really? Why? You don't like playing? So you? That's why you don't play Shimano. It's one of the reasons. Yeah. Also, because I suck. Mm. Uh, but like, no, no, right. no. Those no. are two strong reasons. No. Yeah. Well, two strong reasons. I suck and no. To make sure the next week that you're here. Pin that together. Are John Roke and Brett Sheridan going head to head? I think they're doing it on Wednesday. Christmas! They're going to do it. This... I think they're going to do it on Wednesday. Is it on okay. this show? Uh, it's no. going to be during well, the show. Yeah, yeah. So what we'll do is they're going to the two of them are going to again for those of you who are just tuning in for the first time. Mark Ellis is doing a comedy show that he's going to talk about in just a second here. <laughs> um, and it's going to have the RB3 will be there laughing, um, and we will. Um, we're going to have a bunch of f- familiar faces. Josh McCougan and Ken Navsack will be hosting it, but John Roca and Brett er- Brett Ernst. Now he doesn't have to audition, but Brett I think Sheridan Brett would win that. I think he would too. But Brett Sheridan will go head to head in a contest where they have three minutes to perform in front of just three people, three judges. Those judges being. Roxy Stryer, RB3, and Beardo. And they have to win over those judges. Very last comic standing style. Yep, they have to win over those judges. Then the judges will be on this show and telling us exactly who they thought won, why, and then that person will get the coveted spot inside your show. Tell us about the show. Yeah, so the show's October 26th at Los Globos Theater in Silver Lake. <laughs> it's uh, it's on Sunset Boulevard. It's a great venue. Very excited to be headlining it. Candace Thompson from The Tonight Show, T from Movie Talk, like you said, the afternoon fellows, Josh yeah. and Ken hosting it. Other special guests to be announced, including either Roca or Sheridan. The exciting thing is my friends at Rotten Tomatoes gave me a $100 gift card. So they gave me two of them. So That's one, awesome. I'm going to give away on Twitter. So I have the pinned tweet, the new pinned tweet that is pinned. If you retweet that, you're in the running to win the $100 gift card from Rotten Tomatoes. Also going to have Josh and Ken give away a $100 gift card live on stage from somebody who's Well, what's the Rotten Tomatoes? Show. Is that Fandango? 100? Yeah, it's the yeah, same okay. thing. Yeah, so you, just, movie, you go on movies. Fandango, you give the code. Right. Right. And on the back, and uh, so you could win it if you go to the show. So get tickets at <coughs> marklslive.com, and uh, you can use the promo code Schmoes for a big discount. So yeah, yeah I think check it out. Sheridan's the favorite, right? Going over. Oh, so I didn't yeah. scare him away, and he I didn't bully no, him from been, coming back. Not no, is that what people think? People people realize Brett, Brett's been out because been of working. work. He's been working Brett, a lot. Brett's been texting me. Yeah, he's been. Brett has been working a lot. He invited so Brett, me to coming, an event. Yes, I'm going to be a contrarian Wednesday. here because yes. I know Brett Sheridan yeah. has history as a professional stand-up comic. He does. John Roca has done stand-up a few times, right. More recently than Brett. But the other thing is that Brett's style. I feel like you don't think he's gonna play in the room. Doesn't lend itself mm. to three minutes, right? As well as somebody like, uh, because Roca's newness actually helps him because Roca is gonna be more set up punchline, right? Where Sheridan, it's hard to tell a story, or have that kind of personality. Know, Brett, how about one liners in that minutes. kind of situation? Because I feel like Brett's got a ton of one liners. Yeah, Brett's, Brett's gonna. I think Brett's. I don't know that Brett does have. A ton Brett of also knows who the judges are, and Brett knows how to play the judges. The question is, will Roka be able to, know how to play the judges? I think that Roka's gonna have a hard time winning over Beardo. I think Roka can win over Roxy because I think Roxy Come will be. Come and say to my face, motherfucker. Sorry, Roka. I'll tell you later. But uh, but I also think that Roka. Uh, oh, excuse me, Brett now and Roxy. Brett's got to win Roxy over. I'm, I'm the fairest person I know. I will give it yeah, to the I person who will. does the better job. RB3 is going to be the easiest judge. In a certain well, <laughs> oh, but, that, but that's not easy. If he's the easiest for both, no, then I, that's I'm hard. I'm saying it's going to get... If you if you can hit some jokes, RB3 is going to give you that laughter where you feel good in the room. I wonder if RB3's laugh, because you know how laughter has an effect on yeah. the room in yeah. general, which is why when you and I go see press screenings of comedies, sometimes they funnel in fans, too. Right, so, so they, they can get the... the there's good so laughs hoping going that's going to help. Yeah, but the problem with Beardo, there's two things about Beardo can that's Beardo not going to help. Can Beardo break is my question. Beardo, what is it about you that people say about you? That I'm monotone and joyless. Well, you don't have the clip, huh? All right. Not right here's, now. Here's no. what I will say that I know for a fact. If RB3 and I both go with... Monotone wo- and joyless. <laughs> Great timing. Perfect. You, Perfect. Well, you're, you're lucky you're not the one that's performing. Oh, is Great that, is that uh, Snelling? Snelling calling Beardo monotone Cody and, and I were talking to him. If, okay. so he was oh, right. okay. yeah. right. if RB3 and I both go for one person, 
Beardo will absolutely go for the other person. That I know no, for sure. I don't think so. I don't think that's the case. I, I think, think he's Beardo, not affected either no, way. Beardo's going to be that executive. With he his likes arms. what he likes. He's gonna oh, be, it's he's not gonna that he's affected folded. by what we're saying. It, if we like one thing, I know he's going to end up liking the other thing. Beardo, defend yourself. She's saying I'm contrarian? Yeah, that's what yes. she's saying. Why? Oh. Be- because of all of your opinions on Beardo, I think I, 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 I want to hear these two kind of talking out though. Okay. Okay. But I'm not saying you're swayed by other people's opinions. I'm saying if a majority of people like something, you probably don't because you tend to have a different opinion than the my than the majority. I do too usually, but Yeah, isn't that what people say about you though? Yeah, sometimes. That you're contrarian, but no, like I it sounds pretentious to say like I don't study stand up, but I watch a lot of stand up so I know how it's supposed to be. Yeah. So that's how I'm going to judge He's it. He's like a oh. trainer. He's like a trainer that's never fought. So you're going to judge like bo- it he's technically. He's like a boxing trainer that's never <laughs> this fought. Guy, this guy, uh, he was one of Bob Hope's writers, and he wrote, do you ever get Gene Parrott's book Yeah. on stand-up? Yeah. He wrote, and, and it's a good book, and it's got a lot book. of guidelines, but it's funny because he was Bob Hope's like head wow. writer forever. Yeah. And, and it's like all about how to do stand-up. Yeah. And like... He, but the opening of the book, then the close of the book, he reminds you, like, now keep in mind, I've never done stand-up. <laughs> right. Ever. Here's how to do it. Yeah. And then at the end, it's like, keep in mind, I've never, ever been but on But he's stage. been around it. But he's been around Sometimes it. Sometimes it. yeah. it's the same exact it's thing. Coach has never played football. If you, get, if you get an actor, and I've, I've changed my opinion about this over the years, you get an actor who was cast in a Marvel movie, and you say, oh, I can't believe this person's going to be in a Marvel movie. They weren't even a fan of the comics as a right, kid. Right. Sometimes that can help you, that you're yeah. not bringing your own fandom or your own experience Sometimes, into yeah, it. Sure. You're putting a different set of eyes on it. <laughs> Baggage. Yeah. Yeah. Baggage but, uh, people. But I, th- I do think that I think that they're gonna stand. Uh... Beard is a front row guy too. Yeah. Uh, Whenever yeah. he comes to see me, yeah, of course, he's front row, arms folded. Do you like that? Fr- I, it doesn't affect me either way. No, because he's arms folded but, make me laugh. Because you know at this point you already want him over. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah but yeah. and 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 Beardo, Beardo has a has a smile. <laughs> yeah, whether Smurf. he's laughing or not. He's enjoying right. the evening. He's not there to hate comedy. He love he legit yeah. likes stand up comedy, but yeah. he just he, you don't make him laugh. He's, you're gonna know. But Beardo, I think you should see that movie. By the way, which one? The one that I was just talking about, the uh, all Nina. about Nina. Oh yeah, I'll see it. You should check that out. I'm curious. And, uh, to... I want to see Maisel too. It's yeah, really you should good. see Maisel too. I think that I actually, think you'd like that. Yeah, the thing with Maisel is that it's it's not as much of an accurate representation of stand up comedy, um, but. Again, it, it doesn't. It's not. The I think point back of it. in the day, it's very interesting to see yeah. just from the four episodes I've seen what the village scene was like back then. Yes, but the thing is, with the way when she's performing, it, it, you can you can feel a modern take of stand up comedy inside of this, and it's certainly not what comedy was in the fifties. I understand um, that, but that's okay. I, you, you I gotta know, see more of the yeah. show to get that vibe. I thought, and I and I didn't read the book. I'm, but I'm not talking about the accuracy between. Um, uh, I'm dying up Thank here. Thank you. I'm dying up here. You didn't I, read the book? I didn't read the it's book. A great I did book. read that. I, I actually read that book. But that's the thing is, I think I'm glad I didn't because I think I probably would have felt the way Beardo did because Beardo read the book and then he was let down by the show because it wasn't accurate to the book. My thing is not. I'll about loan you that. the book. You should read the book. I will now. Which book are you guys talking about? I'm dying up here. The, oh, oh, yeah. I, I thought you were talking about a marvelous Mrs. Maisel. No, 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 no. Dying up here, which is the series that was on Showtime, right. two seasons. But I think the portrayal of stand-up comedy in I'm Dying Up Here was. The most accurate that I've seen it ever. Really, anything. you thought it was accurate, dude? It felt like everything I went through for for but the, my time at the comedy store. That show is so depressing. Though, like even Leno said, like I'm talking no. about the I'm talking about the actual mm-hmm. I'm talking about the actual inner workings of the clubs and the spots and waiting and listening and the way that they the interaction between the comedians, the rivalries that are happening in between the way like there are certain things that are going on like the, the outside stories that uh, that no the, the really depressing shit with the family the, the stuff with the families that I'm not talking about I'm talking about the mm-hmm. actual dynamic of the club itself and the portrayal of how stand up comedy works I could see that that's like the, that's what I meant hanging it, out in the parking lot like yes. between sets yes. and just talking about everyone's set. I, yes. I, I enjoyed that part. That's kind of what I meant. I like got the bar talking about what's happening. Like even it was in the 70s, but that's to me that it was like that reminded me of so much of my experience of I mean when there were feuds between Al Madrigal's character and uh, I forget the other guy's name, but like in, in it reminded me of the Bobby Lee Ari Shafir shit that went yeah. down back in the day. Like that was the kind of stuff that yeah. I like I loved that and how that was portrayed. It that was uh, easier to get drinks uh, in the seventies for free because uh, Mitzi gave comics free drinks well, they until pay. Red Fox came in. Yeah, but and <laughs> Red Fox literally drank the entire bar. And Mitzi's like, okay, Red can still get free drinks, but every That's other comic, yeah, <laughs> so we're gonna give you a discount. One, um, wait, Arla, yeah, yeah. how did you feel about like the the people doing stand up? They weren't stand ups. How did you feel about that? Um, yeah, I mean, when it comes to the actual some of the sets, I mean, that that's always the problem. Even in this movie I just told you about, is that there are certain 
you can tell that they cut to the crowd and the crowd's dying laughing at certain jokes that just aren't funny because they needed they needed to portray it. like America's funniest home videos. Yeah, yeah, it's just like the rhythm of it. There are some, there, but it, it like I'm this is what funny. this is what she does in this movie is that her stage presence is 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 good. She's not a stand up comedian, but you can tell that like she prepped like an actor would and learned stand up comic stand up stand up comedy and was able to maneuver and you could see it. Um, and as far as that show went, I thought there were some people who did it pretty well, and there were some people who looked like they were actors on yeah. stage. But like when Santino was up there, you're like, well, that's a professional stand-up comedian. When Eric Griffin was up there, that's a professional comedian. Um, but you know, it's just it's always hard transferring over real sets that work because you've got to cut around stuff. You don't have that actual crowd watching, giving the rhythm and the music of the of what a real crowd does during a big set. And that's what uh, Steve Byrne was telling me about that too, because he's because he's editing his movie right yeah. now, opening act, and it's like. Because there's times when he's filming Jimmy O. Yang, who's who's a great comic in real life, and he's on stage, and it's like, but then I wanted, like, there's certain reactions that he had to take from the crowd from different things, and it's just the magic of editing that you just cobble it all together. America's Funniest Home Videos can be funny, but the, the thing is that they would show, like, a dad stepping on a rake, and then Bob Saget delivering a PG right. line that you know he's he's hating in his head, right. and then they come <laughs> to the crowd, and there's people having convulsions. That, and that's, that's and I'm problem. one of them. Yeah. Um... All right, so <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Now, there's something that happened over the past week on Thursday. So there was a report, and I'm not even going to say this guy's name. This, this Mike Zero guy, right? Comes down. Is that his name Zero? Yeah, Z -E -R -O -H. So many jokes. I don't know who the fuck this guy is, right? The only time I've ever heard of this guy was when Ryan Johnson brought attention to him when he tweeted about him, because I guess this guy makes up bullshit reports, tweets shit out, and, and just makes up garbage all the time, videos. right? Is yeah, it ever videos, is it ever accurate? Does he make videos? I don't yeah, know. Yeah. I don't know if he's accurate. They 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 just poke fun at him. I I don't know. I know nothing about him, so I can't say if he's accurate or not. Just, just from what I hear in the community is that he's not very well, well respected. Okay. So I guess a report came out that on Thursday about this potential idea of Palpatine, Emperor Palpatine, being in Episode Nine. I've heard rumblings. Ooh. I've heard rumblings about this for a while. You know, people. But not, not that, that. I've just heard rumblings about it, and I thought that it makes sense. So I was like, you know, it does. And as far as as far as the, in my head, the way that I think that they could do it, right? So what I decided is, for the topic, then I'm like, let's do this. Let's do a topic. We'll just put a question mark inside of it, and we'll say, will Emperor Palpatine be in Episode Nine with a question mark? That because was the title of Jedi that was Council? the title of the council because that way because what you have to do then if you're going to title it, in my opinion, is you've got to have a pretty good conversation or a long conversation about it of what your reasonings are to pose that question. So it was myself and it was um, it was Darina and it was Ken Napsok and so we talked about it for like 20 minutes, maybe more. I don't know. And that's a huge part of the show and Star Wars fandom in yeah. general is is speculate. Right. And then so we got a couple of, so because it, it because it stemmed I guess from this guy. Which, right. Did you way, talk about it and then immediately debunk it and say there's no way no. this is a question no, but there's no could, way. We said it look we said this is possible. So you did you explored the possibility. So the of report it. came out because the scene itself I do, that the that I think that he came up with I don't think is accurate. I don't think it is. I think that they're going to incorporate him. I think that JJ is going to bring it back to tie it all together. I believe that's going to happen. So you think like Palpatine somehow was able to like like bring Snoke from a dark part of the universe and make him Maybe. seem to be the the master, but then really he was the puppet that Palpatine was dangling the whole time. Maybe I, I think up for that. There was just a lot of stuff with and, and and when you say this, it's a dirty word right off the bat. But like, there's a lot of stuff with cloning that happened in the. Uh, Happened in the extended universe. Multiplicity, canon, great movie. Right, but before canon, it was um, it was the extended universe. And Dark Empire. Movie. Talking about stem cell great research, comic. right? Yes, and I think that he's going to be able to. Um, and I think that you could do that. You could use that particular way in this movie if you wanted to. And again, it sounds it sounds like oh god, it's lazy. It's just that's what they do every time with science fiction and. Maybe, maybe so, but it was just the conversation just went for a while about it. So we posed the question, we talked about it, we let the episode run. And because it was this guy that where it actually stemmed from, so some people, were, when I wrote, will he come back? And people were, have like gifts like, nope, not going to happen. I was like, watch the conversation. You don't even know what, what the conversation is. Then other people were like, I remember when Jedi Council was more than just clickbait. I'm like, that's not clickbait. Clickbait is when you, when you write... Emperor Palpatine in Episode Nine, or or Captain America dies in a, in in the next Avengers movie. Then you like Chris Evans said he dies. Next subject, and it, and that's it, and that's all you. And there's no. So to, define what nothing. you're saying. You're saying clickbait is when you make a statement, not ask a question, it, no, and then you even, don't talk about so, it for click, long. Clickbait is when you just, for example, for for, for the record, every title 
and every thumbnail you put over any video is essentially clickbait because you want you you want to any you're time, baiting people to click. Yes, because anytime you have for client or live, you try to have the most attractive headshot and title so people go, oh, I'll check out that's that's something that interests me. So I'll go in there. Clickbait to me is when you lie about it. Clickbait to me is when you say when you say, okay, look, this is just something that we're going to talk about for a second, just so they click on when it. When there's no basis there's, of oh, any shred of possibility right, of truth, right? Or or you're not going or there's no there's no news there, or just like there's going to be a superhero movie next next, or Marvel announces their next movie. Click here to see what it is. Then you click on it and it says. They say that there's going to be a Marvel movie next year. That's yeah. it. Moving on. That's clickbait. How did, a, how did you address, uh, when you brought it up in Jedi Council, how did you address so there it? There was a report going on there. Who knows if it's true or not? Yeah. I said, I said, I said but, the, but the question is, and how do you relate it to the topic, which was, will he be in it? Yeah. I, I said, that's the conversation. Yeah, I, I realize that. My definition of clickbait, it might be a little different than yours, because my, my definition of clickbait, you're right, everything's clickbait. Right. Literally everything is, is bait for a click, but the term clickbait, I think, factors in when there's it's zero... Honesty. There's zero shred of truth to something. So if it was me hosting the show, I probably would have not based it on a report that's going around but from somebody that I don't trust. But I didn't base it on a report. I'm just saying, how, yeah. and maybe you did it this exact way, is because I, I've i heard rumblings. Right. And, and because you're a person that I trust in the Star Wars community. There's a lot of people I don't because I know how you operate. I know that you know people. That's why I joke with you yeah. when I say you know people because you actually do. So when you say rumblings, I, I believe that your reputation speaks for itself. Yeah, and one guy goes like, well, you should really look. I mean, Harlow's uh, track record for scoops or, uh, when it comes to Star Wars are really bad. He said Plagueis' staff. I'm like, yeah. how about the fact that I said Luke was going to die? Into How about the fact that I said Snoke was going to die? I mean, how about the fact that Luke. I, all these different things Wait. that I, I predicted in the past. Yeah, I'm probably like, I would say that I've missed some. But I've gotten a lot right. Alice, are you saying you wouldn't have titled the video what they titled the video? No, I'm saying I would have titled it if the host was somebody like Christian who actually hears rumblings. I, if it was just based on one report that you saw, because there's certain sites that I don't trust as far as movie news goes, where it's like if this site reports it, then, then but that's, I, I'm not going to run You're talking about it. two different things, though, because what you're talking about, Tootsie, that's the, the reason why the question mark was there. Because yeah. it's more Tootsie? No. But you're talking about He toots? does call me toots, and I <laughs> find yeah, it should, I'll call you toots. Yeah. Um, that was amazing. But yeah. what I would say... Smacks what I, my ass when I bring him a cocktail. Yeah. The, 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 you have to, like, you got to ask a question behind it. <laughs> America's be, funniest yeah. and, and No, I, I, I don't, I don't buy the argument that a question mark saves everything. Not, not everything, but for this particular <laughs> thing, because of the conversation... Because you had heard rumblings. It's not just that, though, because it's, it's a topic that we wanted to talk about. And it's a topic that, because if, you, if you're asking, so, okay, look, so even so if I would open it like this, look, this guy, Mike Firo, whatever Zero. the fuck his name is, if this, this guy's normally, he's always wrong. Yeah. He is wrong nine out of ten times, but if he's right, and if this particular character comes back, which, by the way, I don't even think his report is true. I just think that even if you didn't even have him and he didn't do this report, mm -hmm. and I would have would it still have been clickbait? If this report that he – if he never brought it out, and because we've talked about Palpatine before, right. and I thought that he was going to come back, and if that was the, the conversation on Thursday without this report, is it still clickbait or if, only because this, this fucking guy did, no, brought if, it up? If, no, if you if, – but that's what I'm saying. Is yeah. that if a website, let's say uh, clownpenis.fart, yeah, they're back is, yeah. is a is a website that I don't trust with movie news. So mm -hmm. clownpenis.fart is the only person out there that's saying that Iron Man is going to be in a DC movie, then I can't run with it. But if I know people who are close to Kevin Feige, right. or what, what's close what, what, to, say, what is clown penis fart saying again? What are they? They're what's saying that, that Iron Man is going to be in a DC movie. Okay, now <laughs> here's the thing, though. So, but you could, but you have a very different show on movie talk, right? Yeah. To where you're reporting specific news as opposed sure. to a speculation conversation. But let's say you are, let's say you're on Heroes, right? And let's say that the report, even though it's a report, like, and then Koi Andrew says, you know what? Let's have a conversation. Could Iron Man ever work in the DC mm -hmm. because of this report? And so it starts off: Could Iron Man ever work in the DC EU? Yeah. With a question mark, right? And then there's this 20 minute conversation about it. That's not clickbait off of that article. That's a conversation they're having about that particular piece. Movie talks a different different scenario. You're reporting off of a website, right? That, and because you guys are reporting just on the news. Then I'll say it like this: If you know the show Jedi Council at all, yeah. then you know that it's a it's a fun show to speculate about the future right. of Star Wars, right? As much as it is break news. Well, that's what I'm saying. 
It's because it was because if you've of this never guy been to Jedi Council before, and you somehow are a Star Wars fan and right. have not heard of Jedi Council, and you see that headline, and you are you should be you should be savvy enough to be aware that early on in the show that we're not just running with like news items. Right. That drop. What you're saying is you need to watch the conversation because that's what a lot of people didn't do. Yeah. They saw the headline and they went, "Oh, they're just doing clickbaity yeah. stuff." And I'm not gonna fall for it. Yeah, and it's not clickbaity when it's yeah. a full on 20 minute conversation about could he work now in episode 9 that's right. all points I think so, shows like that have to have the freedom to be able to have the speculative because yes. we even do like speculative stuff on movie talk and again contrary to people's thoughts I enjoy speculating just be responsible when it doesn't go your way right is this show clickbaiting now that we clickbaited the title clickbait <laughs> totally. to talk about totally. clickbait no because we're talking about because we're talking about clickbait so we're not clickbaiting no it's not clickbait. we're talking yeah. about the fact yeah it's if, if the, right. the topic should be discussed, the real clickbait thing to me is where you put something in there that never gets brought up. Right. Yes. Right. Yeah. That's, that happens that's right. a lot. Or you say like uh, like like new uh, new glass trailer, and, and it's, it's not the glass it's like an trailer. image or something. Or if yeah. the answer to the question is no, like this happens. I I like to read my fair share of like People Us Weekly, you know the the magazines that tell me about my gossip. Is and that really like, reading? Yes, really it is. And the question will be like. Did Amanda Bynes kill her mom? Right. And then the, it will be you'll open and it'll be like, no, but there is a party going on. Right, and, right, and right, like, right. That's clickbait. It's like, oh. that, that's exactly. But what you you're, click on it, and you're like, what? Yes. And then it's just like, no. Now, now, if you clicked on it and it was a show, and these people for 20 minutes were talking about that potential thing with her mother, it's not because that's the conversation that you thought you were getting into when you when you clicked on it. Let's be honest. The real clickbait is when you click on that. You click on the the Palpatine thing, yeah. and it's not. It's it's you like selling something, right? And it takes you to another website right. and ask for your. That's the whole thing. Like, now there's a difference of whether or not you want to go, go on yeah. and listen to that. But if the people who are promised clickbait is when you're not, it's false advertising. So, since we're on this right now, what was your percentage of? Of of possibility that him you think back? of Palpatine's going to be in there in one way I could buy in when one way or another of him actually, but mentioned by name, no. Are oh, you actually showing up in one yeah. way or another hologram, hologram or something along yeah, those lines? Yeah, I, I could I could say hey I like Derek Jeter. I mean he's walking I think he's going to be in, involved in the plot. I'd give it an eighty five percent. Involved in the plot, but again, has to. It can't be like, Pierre. hey, remember that time Palpatine did this? No, but I mean, I think he's gonna. I think is it, there's something else because the way they've been setting it up with comics and, and him showing up, it, he can be dead. He can be like a force, dark force ghost, or yeah, whatever. But be, maybe, or maybe something along those lines. Or Kylo Ren it, it discovers him, and like, this is what the report was that he discovers like a hologram. I think there's gonna be more. I think there's gonna be something else too. I think that the Snoke thing will come back. I think there'll be something involved with how Snoke was brought in in the first mm. place in the series. In episode nine, and I think that there will be something that that I think that JJ has been very upfront in saying that this will connect the entire nine, all nine movies. And I think how better to do that? Because what was the thing that was never he said really that? Yeah, and what Fuck. was? But here's the thing, though. Remember That's episode three? Awesome. Yeah, like episode yeah. three. Episode three. When they're sitting there talking about Darth Plagueis the Wise, that he was able to cheat death, that he taught his apprentice everything he knew. We, yeah. we haven't capitalized on that yet, and you could. You don't necessarily have to, but you could. Are you going to be nervous when you're uh, at the episode nine premiere, hopefully, and you're sitting in there and you're about to find out whether the last year and a half of your show has been nothing but clickbait? I know it's funny. Well, no, I I can't win. Another guy. This is this was the best because you know. So Chuck Wendig, for you guys who don't know, Chuck Wendig, I feel was complete bullshit happened to him over the weekend. Yeah, yeah, right? that he got job. Big time. So he's very outspoken on on Twitter. I'm not, and I'm not defending his politics, and I'm not even defending some of his tweets. I think that if I was going to be, if I was his friend, uh, and I'm telling him like, dude, you shouldn't be tweeting this stuff right now because it's like, you know, you, it's. I don't think you need to do it. I think you're above it. Like he's using a lot of vulgarity and things of that nature. Going after trolls and stuff. Yeah, and he's and he's very, and he's, he's very he's, he's very left wing. Right. So, and the thing is, and that's not that's not the defense of it. The defense of it is the fact that his the reasoning why he was given for why he was fired. And so, for Chuck Wendy, who wrote the aftermath books, he was set to write another book for Star Wars. There's Marvel the comics. Darth Vader comics. There's tons of stuff that he was supposed to do. Um, he was let go because from what he says in his tweets, which is, again, this is accurate. You know, maybe they come out and they say something else. But from right now, because it hasn't been done in the response, so this is a response that I'm that I am taking accurately. He says that um, 
that they fired him because they didn't like the res- the, the, the what was happening, the response of the Twitter comments and the, 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 the negative comments that were coming from his comments. And it's like, well, then shut down YouTube if that's the case. You know what I mean? And it's like you can't fire Can we somebody. Do that, you for, think? I, I hope. But for yeah, free speech. It'll happen on its own. But anyway, so I, so I write the, I write this thing that I think is horseshit that Disney and, and Lucasfilm and, and Del Rey or whoever it was that, that did that to him, right? And then someone writes to me, this is why I don't watch that clown on Jedi Council anymore, you shill. How am I a fucking shill when I'm calling out Disney at this point? It's like, make up your mind. You can say I'm a douche for having that particular opinion, but it's like, what a dummy. A dummy. For guy saying, came after me, I'm sure. But it was, it was the yeah. same guy. But he didn't even know what he was saying. He was like, yeah, he, it's like, you can say I don't watch the show anymore because of this bullshit politics that this he's taking this leftist side, and that's fine if you want to say that. I'm, that's not why I'm taking the side, but that's what you want to say. But don't throw in chill there too, because that's exactly what I'm going after on this tweet. <laughs> it makes no doing, sense. Yeah, the absolute opposite. The opposite of it. I was going to ask because I didn't get my check from Disney last week. Yeah, I didn't get it either. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we got host. That's how I pay the rent. Yeah, we got host. That's why I did the Mickey. tweet. Mickey. Yeah, but you should um, ask the hot girl underneath you. Oh, Disney whore! Let you move in. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so um, Riley, any blowback? Anything else from that? From from, from, the, the, from the wedding Dick? stuff? Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, I think he's back to tweeting. He's yeah. back to doing his thing. I mean, I think the the part that I picked up on was that he, it was his editor that said it was his decision, his call, and that you're being very vulgar on yeah. Twitter to Chuck. Which for me, I, I see trolls come at him. And he basically goes, you know what? Fuck you. Yeah. And that's what he would do. And he would. And so this is Marvel Star Wars writer Chuck Wendig fired allegedly for his political tweets. Again, allegedly. That's I, the thing. I, 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 yeah. So if you go, so if you, so, he, but the thing is, I think you got to get not, more to the not story. Not to say about clickbait, but yeah. I think Deadline kind of spun it a bit. Yeah. Here on this, uh, uh, the politics. I, I, I took it that he was just very like, fuck you, fuck you, fuck. There's you, more to the story though too, because we need, we do need to get. The other side of it here, because the question is, was he warned? Was he warned? Was he warned in the fact that this is like, keep doing this. You got to stop doing this. Right. Because if you keep doing it, we can't have you representing. Yeah. I I wonder if after the uh, the James Gunn stuff happened, if it was like a company wide thing where they tried to talk to a lot of their creators and artists and stuff like that. But the, 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 the fear for me is just the precedent that you're setting where it's like, okay, so if. Some if John Favreau makes a movie that or a TV show, if people don't like the Star Wars show, right? Um, and and they start attacking him, who's getting fired there? I, like who who is now not going to get fired for negativity? Like right. how much negativity is too much? But that's the question. I mean, you could see the argument, you, and uh, and I'm again taking the other side of it. You can see the argument to where if they if they called Chuck in and said, "Look, man." You are really you're representing kids brands here with Star Wars and you're doing Marvel stuff and like you're being vulgar on Twitter and like you're really you're going after people and like we want to scale that back. So as long as you're working here, we would ask you to please pull back on that. Mm-hmm. If those conversations did happen, and there's proof that those conversations did happen. I'll be honest. I'm, then I'm going to be the shill, and I'll be on the side of the other side here of, of Marvel yeah, and I, Star Wars. I, I would too. I might not necessarily agree right. with the politics of, of them telling you that, but that's, you've been warned. That's your but job, and that's your employer. Because, yeah. and, and because you're warned. However, if you are just doing this, you're like, well, no one's saying anything to me about it. I'm going to keep doing my thing, and I'm very outspoken about politics. I'm going to do it, and it doesn't seem like any of my employers care whatsoever. And then you just randomly, no, dude, you're out now. Why? Because we don't like the comments from mm-hmm. your tweets. He answered like, that. What? He did a he did a follow up. Yeah. Frequently asked questions about everything. One of those topics was, were you warned? And he said, nope. Right. That's what out I mean. of left field. You can't do that. I you that, cannot do that. According to him, yeah. you cannot do yeah. that. You can't just. You, you you have to warn somebody. You have to say, I've had conversations with people in this office. Where it's like, do it again, and you can't. We, we can't. We you buy. You can't. And right. his name was Snyder. <laughs> way, to, way to keep it. Way to keep it quiet. Well, on a different note, yeah. something that actually I found a very positive use for Twitter over right. the weekend, and it was me getting to see because I got the first look, and then a lot of other people did too of RB3's new short film, yeah, Flick Ticks. It's great. and it's so Ken's in it, right? Good. Is it an SC film? Ken is great. Ace is in it. Oh, nice. Cops Cops that's what I want to ask RB3 because I don't know, like to be honest, if he makes these movies for for himself, for to to get out there for his reel in the future, or if it's like a class assignment. But either way, he pulled it off great. It's a it's a great parody of of Movie Pass and everything that's gone on with that. And yeah, RB3 as a director. 
knows how to make Ken Knapsack shine. Good. Oh, yeah, it's he knows fantastic. it pretty well. Where can we watch it? Uh, you can it's go, available now. Yeah, it's called Flick Ticks is the name of the... Uh, On his Twitter or something? The, yeah, everybody's... Uh, to, there are a lot of us who have tweeted about it and okay. stuff, so it's All right, up. cool. All right, let's move on over to... We missed a lot of the news. Um, so let's move on over to some movie news. Riley, there's a ton of it. There's a ton, yeah. yeah I, well, I, one thing that was confirmed, I don't know if you have it in your notes, yeah. but it looks like like we were speculating, uh, Rambo will be fighting the Mexican cartel. Cook bait. Which mm-hmm. I know, which is uh, which to me is... Makes sense. Exactly. Because we thought on the ranch, he yeah. was like walking away on the ranch, and yeah. it's like, I'm just gonna go be a rancher. And so, what might affect a rancher in the southeast or is or southwest? Probably yeah. gonna be a uh, maybe it's the north way of Wyoming or some shit like whatever that. it might be. It's gonna affect it, him. It looks like he's going after it, uh, and this is gonna be his last battle from what they're saying. So, so he's does everything you hear about this movie just get you more and more yes. excited? This is this is just as I'm just as excited for this as I am Star Wars. Um, wow, really? No, not really. But 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 <laughs> you just had a, a Rambo but, podcast. I am very excited to to when I saw Ram the last one. I mean, I was I saw the movie twice in two days in the theater, and like I you liked it that much. I loved it. I love yeah. I love the Rambo movies because they're so yeah. silly and so but like. I just love the character of John Rambo. Yeah, we saw that one together. That might be our combined all-time record uh, from a team perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How much corn we crushed during one easily, movie. easily. It was because we got we got yeah. two large corns for that, and we got refills of two large corns. I've never heard was... anybody abbreviate popcorn before. Oh, That's all time. genius. Oh, I love yeah. popcorn. Yeah, Brian Tyler has to come back life. to do that music. I don't. He's got to come back. I'm, I'm sure somebody else could corn do just and fine. Butter. <laughs> Wow. It's so weird, though. Wow. It's so sure, somebody else could go in and just do you know a what's remarkable funny about job. That is that it, that's I mean, it's the most ignorant take you've ever had in anything. But but besides <laughs> is that, a, is that a dom take? Dom take? Maybe just a twat it's take. It's kind of dom. Uh, say it, no, it's not a dom take. You're telling me, no, you're telling no. me because I'm informed Christian. Christian. Not, about the situation. Yeah, it's not a dom is that take. You could okay. you could have somebody like yeah. Brian Tyler was great. I'm not I'm not against Brian. But you're saying anyone can do it. It's a stupid. So that's what a twat take is. That's why we have it. I never said anyone can do it. Did you listen to this week's episode by the way? Because you need to. Oh okay. Why did they was, come at me? I was no. saying that, that there's great. other composers nice too, that could come in and do it and take a cue right. from Brian Tyler that, that, and do it. That's why I don't think it's a dong take. I just I don't agree with it uh, because you just kind of shun off uh, composers and stuff. Too. I, do, I, I in do. no way do I do that. A lot of times you do. I do not. You I'm just you saying don't like that nonsense and you don't like composers. I, <laughs> I, I love composers. They make movies yeah. so much better. They do. Um, but the point is, Brian Tyler really brought. Um, Brought the score of Rambo to life. And Hum it's it. Underrated. Hum it for me. No, we can just play it and get a strike. Um, <laughs> so I'm excited that that movie is coming. When does that movie come out, Riley? Do we know that? I don't know. I'm curious. Yeah. I'm excited I'm... for the movie. I don't think it's me been too. officially announced, but it's yeah, next it's, year. Well, they start shooting it. So they're shooting. You're shooting it now. Year. I would love for it to come out in like January of next year. That's when the first one came out. What's you your mean hype level? 2020? Yeah. Let's see. What's like a movie uh, yeah, announcement like that y'all get most excited? Because obviously for me, it's Star Wars above everything else. And then I'm really having trouble containing myself for cool. Creed 2. Yeah. yeah, I'm having yeah. trouble I, with that I'm, too. I'm, I'm even surprised. And I love Rocky you, and I love Creed. Are you on the show tomorrow? Um, no, me? I'm not. No, okay. Because we're going to do... We're, so we'll talk to you doing? about that. And, and again, I'm like Brian Tyler. I'm replaceable. I'm sure you're going to no, have no, no, a No, no, The reason show. why is we want to do a conversation about the movies that are coming out for the end of the year. This is Brian Tyler's music. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, yeah. it's great. Um, conversation Rambo, before the Rambo. end of the year. Yeah, the conversation about the end of the year about the remaining fall movies and which ones we're really looking forward to. So obviously, you're saying nobody else can walk into a studio out. and do this? Not the same way. I mean, why would you want? To, it's the same way. Alvin Silvestri. If was Brian Tyler's not available, missed. I'm not saying fire someone Brian else Tyler. could do it. Brian Tyler's like, sorry guys, I'm booked up. Right. I mean, you could get someone else to do it, but he just he knows it. He knows the property. Brian he knows Tyler the did the score for uh, Age of Ultron, re- replacing Alan Silvestri, and it was great. I, yes. I liked it, but I like I like the I like when Silvestri came back. Ultron. I mean, the, uh, the Infinity War score was great. It's it was so, so fantastic. Good. Yeah. Um, all right, Riley, what the hell's happening in the world of movies? Uh, did you see the teaser for Aladdin? Mm-hmm. I did. Yeah, what'd you think? People are I shitting s- on this. Yes. Um, really? People yeah. are shitting all over because they yeah, said... Yeah, baby. Well, I heard, again, Frank Janish on, uh, on on the Schmodown was just like, oh, it's just a bunch of images. That's it. This is what the teaser is. It's like <laughs> the, the best part, and, and Gilmore said it, going back to what we were just talking about here, was that it was that trailer was all about the music. The music was great, but I do find it... The, the music was great. Yeah. The, the imagery that I saw in that, the way that the cave sounds, and yeah. the fact that you got your first look at Aladdin, you got the lamp, that is the definition of a teaser trailer. Yep. And anybody who is shitting on this, fine, if you didn't like it, if you had your expectations built up, but any Star Wars fan 
that says that's not a good teaser trailer has no idea what the fuck they're talking okay, about. Okay, I'm a Star Wars because fan, and I didn't think it was good. When Star Wars fans, Star Wars fans will go gaga over one image, or they hear teaser, yeah. and they don't see a lot in those because we like being teased. My, that all that thing did was tease you. I, it's not that I didn't like the amount; it's that I didn't like the way it looked. No, oh, that's different. So, that's different. Uh, yeah, no, that's fair. It, yeah. it, it, if you didn't like the look of it, that's I fine. Didn't, but the fact that people wanted more from the trailer. Right. I, I, of course I want more from a trailer. From a teaser, I don't necessarily need more. What I have done with a line, maybe. Like the teaser but, trailer from, for Captain Marvel. <laughs> That was a teaser. Just a trailer. Nope, it's a teaser. Just a trailer. Definitely a teaser. They released it as one of the trailers. Nope. Uh, it, he, there was something weird about the angle at which he grabbed the lamp. And oh. it, it just, I didn't like it. I didn't like the way it looked. I didn't like the, the angle way he, that he grabbed the lamp. The, the way it was, was it shot. Was it inappropriate? It looked like he was going to suck face with it hard. Yeah. That's definitely true. I mean, it's a pretty popular lamp. This, yeah. Here's the thing uh, Aladdin top two. <laughs> Pretty shiny. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. I wouldn't yeah. mind. I might take a very popular lamp. Yeah. Aladdin's top two for me. Lamp, uh, you and me, Olive Garden, right. Friday night. I, I love, love lamp. Yeah, I mean, I like. The, I mean, it opens. <laughs> I love lamp. The, I mean, you look like him. Uh, the opening. The opening alone. It was, the opening. It's the I wanted to see a wrecked Death Star in the distance. Yeah. I didn't. Mind. Listen, that's my, get, my daughter thought it was Star Wars. My daughter thought it was Star Wars oh, when I showed it. It was. Yeah. It's fine looking. It wasn't great looking. I'm not crapping on it, but yeah. it was nothing to write home about. I just need to see. And I didn't Scottish see Jasmine, people ripping just, it apart. I saw yeah. people raving about it. I think especially yeah. just because this is one of those films that's had a somewhat of a malign, not malign but delayed start. Yeah. They, there was a little bit of controversy oh, with yeah. extras. Yeah. They had trouble casting it. The fact that now you see images dark. and and real was footage the from was this or Mulan? Was movie. this one? This one. There was this yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the cave looks great. There's Jafar. The voice. There was controversy. Was that Jafar? Well. Oh yeah, there's yeah. Jafar sitting around there. Man. Yeah, man. Come on. I'm digging it. I'm digging it so far. I mean, there's it's, it's, nothing there yet. We're just letting you no. know that this movie called Aladdin is actually happening. Yeah, that's what this was about, and that's why it's fine. Right. But the. The part where he like grabs, grabs it the mic. Okay, let's let's see how he caresses this. Just... Yeah, because I didn't. And this is a, this is a big critique we got from everybody is that we, we we're not allowed to watch trailers without talking over it because people don't, the yeah. audio is that angle. I don't, like, don't it. like the angle. Right. I don't like it. Who's the kid? He's being very he's gentle. I don't think he looked that good. He's teasing the lamp's undercarriage. Yeah. If you notice there, he's got he's the being a, a tender right. lover. Right. That looks exactly like Indiana Jones when he's about to swip the Too idol with room. the sand. Do you think part of the disappointment is that you don't see the genie at all? No, I'm okay with that. Yeah, in the okay. first teaser, there was a, uh, talking about clickbait, there were a lot of people that ran with headlines like Will Smith's Aladdin teaser trailer that's, reveal. That's clickbait, and it's dun, and people dun, and I would watch the thread, dun, dun. and right. people are like, "There's no right. no Will Smith Comes, didn't show up." The genie arrives in the Aladdin. That's ex and if you did an that, exact. And if, and if you did that, that to me, I that's mean, clickbait. I mean, technically, the genie's in no, no, there, but. He, you know? I guess. If but you say, hey guys, on, if, if, if you say, hey guys, Mark's gonna drive down the street yeah. and you see my Ford Fusion with tinted windows and you can't see me in it, am I not there? Disney Aladdin's teaser trailer. Still there. That windows? is that is not a that is not clickbait. That is exactly what it is. When you click on it, you get the teaser trailer. Um, when you say Will Smith, first look. <laughs> a lot of people do Will Smith's Aladdin teaser trailer review. I mean he's in right. the movie. You know? yeah. He's in the movie, but, right. they're, but he's the movie. not but they're giving it's not it... his Aladdin. That sounds like he's directing it. Exactly. Right. All right, what's what's next? Yeah. Uh, in uh, No Shit Sherlock News, uh, Ryan Coogler is going to write and direct Black Panther. No deal. way! Ryan Coogler is going to. Right. Yeah. yeah which he's was, like which... quietly signed his deal. Right. But for him. So, and, I mean, and all of the millions that well, he's the going thing to with make. The, the thing that the, the THR mentioned when we talked about it last week on Movie Talk was that he, uh, it, it, like, it didn't happen as initially as quickly as people thought it should. Right. And part of that was Ryan Coogler taking his time right. and being like, well, I'm going to, you know. Explore I, my options. Yeah. yeah. And. You know, pay me. <laughs> why, but why, yeah. why wouldn't you? He's just like right. because you you have one of the most profitable s films right. of all time. Take your meetings, dude. Yeah, take your meetings, and that's what, exactly what he did. He went to take other meetings and other places. And I'm sure he's got tons of stuff. He's and then did he do that? I, Are I you would, guessing that? I would be shocked if he didn't do that. I'm sure when right. he takes a meeting, he's like, well, I I want. He knows that he's that he's wanting to do Black Panther right. too, and, and he's pretty sure that he's going to get paid. So right. and studios and studios are coming in because the thing that I Jason Isaacs when he was in here too was, was I always get that guy confused with Timothy Dalton. Really? What? Looks a lot like Timothy Dalton. 
Really? Yeah. Or, I, I don't know what Timothy Dalton looks like now, no, but it it, Timothy Dalton from License to Kill as Bond in 1989, you extrapolate him 30 years down the road, and you're like, right. I think that's Timothy Dalton now. I just he, think of him Penny Dreadful. They, yeah, he's he's mm. aged. Well, what he says, that, what, what Jason Isaac <laughs> said, though, was that they don't lock, you'd be surprised how they don't lock you down to, some people they do, but some mm-hmm. contracts. I'm surprised that they didn't sign Cougar on to direct the sequel the same way they did with Peyton Reed. I'm pretty sure they did that with Peyton Reed. Um, that he was he was attached to do the second, I think. They didn't Ant-Man. do it with Patty Jenkins either. That, no. That, and I'm talking Marvel, though, because Marvel oh. at this point, because with DC... Um, you don't they, know how. They didn't know. They, 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 they couldn't. They had Man of Steel, which was really the one that the only one that had worked for them at that mm-hmm. point. So then they, they grabbed Patty Jenkins and they go, all right, let's, let's see what happens. And then they're probably like, shit, we should have signed her for two right off the bat because it probably cost them an arm and a leg to get her back for two. Well worth it, obviously. Same thing with Coogler. It's like, I'm surprised Marvel didn't try to lock him down for two. The question is, did they lock Gun down for Guardians 2 when they signed him in for Guardians 1, or did they just bring him back? I don't remember. I don't remember either. So, I mean, it's very possible this is just yeah. a standard. This is what they do. Yeah, but if I'm, if I'm Ron Coogler again, I'm waiting until the box office has finished its run. I'm waiting yeah. until the, the Blu-rays get released because I want to see exactly, oh, this is how much... My movie did. He's gonna. You he's know, funny. That's kind of what he did. Yeah. It's yeah. like everything finally settled with Black Panther. Right. But also, Marvel's in, in a position book. where Marvel knows, like they they know that they want to have talks with the director right. that they want to get back, and then they also know when it's time to back up the dump truck because th- their movies have timelines that they need to be introduced in. So like you can't have Black Panther two come out too early right. or too well, late the because they have in. it planned but out. But that's the agent. The agent then goes to Marvel and says, Look, right. this is why I, I'm guaranteeing that he went on many meetings, because then the, it gives you bargaining power to where the agent now says to Marvel, Okay, look, he wants to come back, he wants to do the sequel, but he's got this and this on the potential table and if he takes this deal with these guys, that it's gonna take him out of that filming there. But, you know, if you guys are are able to sweeten the pot a little bit, then he'll come back to do this. And that's what the agent's job is. And then Marvel goes, all right, he's worth it. The movie made like a billion dollars, whatever the hell it made. Bring him back. But you take those meetings, you get those offers, and then you have those relationships with whatever jobs you didn't take that when Black Panther 2 is done, now Ryan Coogler goes out and says, okay, I'm back now. I'm on the table. I've just done two movies that crushed. Or four, if you even look at the critical uh, success inside of Fruitvale Station. Yeah. What do you got for me? All right, so I put you guys in a movie theater, and you you, you can only see one movie. Okay, I'm going to give you four options. I'm going to give you Black Panther 2, mm-hmm. Doctor Strange 2, <laughs> Captain Marvel, or Spider-Man Far From Home. Which movie theater do you walk into? Black Panther 2. I'm definitely yeah. out on, on Doctor Strange, too. Uh, I, I, I love the and movie. And I'm out but on Spidey. It's, it's it was no, between Captain Marvel and Black Panther, but I go Black Panther 2. It's a no-brainer to me right now because it's the only one that you Which one did you proposed. pick? I'm about the only one you proposed inside of that whole thing is one inside the narrative that hasn't been told yet, and that's Captain Marvel. That's why I'm going to Captain Marvel too. Yeah, yeah. Because Captain, yeah. Mar- all those other movies happen <laughs> after the Avengers. This one happens before, and I need to know what happens and but, how that combines uh, into it. I think just, you can figure it out. Not just the lead. I don't in. want to. I want to know. Not just. I the don't lead want in. to either, but yeah. I want to see Black Panther. But, too. but even yeah. if I take away, but if I somehow take, take away the, the fact that okay, these people disappear and they're back, we all know they're going to be back, right? Yeah. The, the intriguing thing about Captain Marvel to me is it's the time period that it takes place. And so forget the the how she's going to save the Avengers. Right. Let's stop the movie before that and just see what was going on in the 90s with Sam Jackson, with right. S.H.I.E.L.D., when they discover who this person is, and then where the hell does she go? Is that how I'm, they know I'm, about I'm, alien life in the first place? I am yeah. fascinated by all that. Me too. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but I could fill in the blanks with that one. We're yeah. going to crush a lot of corn yeah. in the Captain Marvel I, I don't want to fill in the blanks for that I, one. I don't this. want to. Right. I was given a uh, She wants must to see Black Panther. I'm telling you is I don't want to. So what are you going to do do about Black Panther? I'm doing Captain Marvel. Same thing with (laughs) Spider-Man to me is the one I really want to see the sequel to. However, Black Panther 2, because the problem is if I miss out on Captain Marvel and I jump to Black Panther 2, then I don't know anything that happened leading up to it. And Black Panther from what I see in the last movie is dead. Wakanda, how does he come not back? so forever for Christian. But how does he come back? You guys got to also throw in the <laughs> fact he, that yeah. Black Panther 2, right. Spider-Man 2, or Far From Home, they all happen after Avengers 4. So you're going to miss Avengers that's, 4. That's what I'm saying. Right I'm not going to miss Avengers Marvel. 4. That wasn't one of the options. Exactly. No, no because He's everybody, everybody, everybody would, see would have picked 4. that. Right. Which didn't it? And there was some report with the Russo brothers out recently. They said what, what they was wrapped this? filming and they yeah. put a big blobby, gookily blue blob that everybody was like, "That's Thor ship." I'm like, I see nothing. I think it's the genie from Aladdin. It no. looks like the genie from Aladdin. No, well, it's Disney. They wrapped. So. They wrapped filming. They went on Twitter. They said, "We're wrapped," and they shared an image. Look at Twitter just baiting Copster into tweeting. What? Yeah. No tweets see? yet. And I love. 
That's I what, love the speculation. So what, off of this. That's all they tweeted. That's all they tweeted. That is the uh, people. That's the big went, blue guy from Watchmen. That's his cra- penis. They went crazy over this. Right. That, that's I mean, the Watchmen guy's dick. What the hell is it? No. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Could it's be. the only. Actually, yeah, probably. Yeah. It's Aquaman, Shazam, Wonder Woman, two, the Batman. Out of those four of those. Mm-hmm. Mm. Wait, was that is that posed to the question? We, we're leaving this conversation. Give me those four again. Aquaman, Shazam, Wonder Woman 2, The Batman. The first two are right out. I want to yeah. see Wonder Woman 1984 because I want to see what she's doing in that time period, but I, Batman's my guy. Had I not seen the... Even though we don't know who even is going to be the right. Batman. If I had not I seen Batman. the Wonder Woman teaser thing at Comic-Con, I would have picked Wonder Woman 2, but because I did see it, I'm going to go with The Batman. Mm. I'm I, worried about Wonder Woman 2. Did I see the Wonder Woman 2 teaser? No. You didn't. I was out. Okay. You're out. But yeah, I'm, I'm worried. I'm worried about no, it. I hope it's like gonna... it. We've not had that conversation. It. it there's some he didn't really, like the teddy bear. There's some really silly stuff going on. It's huh. like like there there like there wasn't in they the first. They've been filming movie, for like two weeks. Yeah. Well, but so was Guardians, and Guardians hit the exact same tone in that two weeks. But like they had the they, they the, when they show you the scene in the mall, it just seems like a different movie. Good music. The music was fine, but it's it, 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 it is seemed... a different movie. <laughs> what do you mean? You said it feels like a different oh, Roxy, movie. Yeah. I mean, everything today. It's it's it's, it's like it's, I could tell you were getting annoyed with me today. A little bit. <laughs> this is it, this is. Great, I wasn't though. sure why yeah. though. It's like, so fun to come the, in and watch it this is, dynamic. It's, it's a different At least I'm tone. Aware enough the to tones know. inside. When you start changing tones inside of your franchise, you have problems. Like you have to, like the tone itself. You want it to be consistent. Now, again, because of agreeing and the fact that two weeks in, you can't just from a little thing that they showed at Comic Con. Is that the tone they're going to go with? Uh, that's why I said I'm worried about it. If they turn it into this kind of sillier thing to which it looked like in the in this Comic Con footage, then I'm worried. Man, if we titled this uh, this episode "Roxy and Christian Get Testy," it would not be clickbait. Mm-mm. I am, <laughs> guys. It is. Right. Can we turn the AC on in here because it is getting <laughs> it's, it's hot, hot. steamy. But yeah. is your grand is your grandmother happy with the hair? It's coming back. Yeah, she's getting better with it. She's been listening to the show. She oh, doesn't yeah? like the yeah. the hair color, and she, she doesn't oh, like the God, language. No. No. She's fine with language. She's fine with the language. Yeah, she's fine with language. Okay, what, what fuck the, off. Oh, what does she like? What doesn't she like? For What's her notes? Um, well, she doesn't. She doesn't like that it cuts out. So that's on her. She says she, oh, she's, she miss, she's missing huge chunks of it. She, oh, your she'll, internet's bad. No, she just like she'll click with her big fingers on another part, and then it will fast forward, and she doesn't know how to get back. <laughs> what is she, Harry from Harry and the Hendersons? Who the hell it's is like she? It's like kind of unbelievable. It's really good. Um, she, so she, she says it's So she could possibly miss this conversation yeah, by could. accident. She might. Okay. She might, definitely. Uh, I've never heard that. Oh, there's my big-fingered grandma. <laughs> <laughs> she's got big Are you sure she's not the wolf? Right. <laughs> like, she, they're just like... Grandma, really, what huge paws you have. Know, this show really was only big. a minute and a half. They're really big. Yeah, she was like, one minute you're talking about sex and drugs. And the next minute you're talking about movies, and I'm like, well, that kind of is what's happening. Right, that's true. But does your grandma live in a candy house in the woods? Oh God, I wish. Well, that's not bad. Her biggest There's a note, lot of chocolate. Her there. biggest note is that it cuts out. Bread. Yeah, it's a witch. It's that. A trap. I blame she Roxy for that. Every good grandkid at some point has to go to their grandparents' place and fix the internet. That's, I've been, that's the job. Okay, so so much so that, first of all, my grandmother tried to set me up with the internet provider that that's was amazing. there. Uh, and it was not amazing because then I tweeted about it. And then he found my Twitter. And saw it. And saw it. Oh, no. And then started tweeting. And I had to block him. Oh, Wait. So he was that weird? It was Well, now we know why Grammy's level. internet's cut wow. out. Next so she hooked level. you up with a stalker? He's like the cable guy. She, He's pulling the plug at will. She attempted, and he wow. he was also, I, I will say, more than twice my age. Oh. Jewish, all she cared about. Oh, right. uh, she's waiting for those Jewish grandbabies. And it was an intense uh, few hours where he found my Twitter. He was not happy wow. that Jesus. I tweeted it's, about him. That's hilarious. Wow. All right. Yep. Well, uh, and also, she made her internet name Roxy. And I have nothing to do with it. So anytime she has guests, they call me and say, how do I get on the internet? <laughs> well, to be fair, she probably didn't want her internet name to be Roxy, but right. those big mitts of hers just get on the keyboard <laughs> yeah. and just whatever spills out, spills out. There's something about them. They're just so large. Um, right. Let's do one last one and get the hell out of here. <laughs> Roxy's uh, grandma is actually how about, you know what, I'll, I'll take it. What's, what's, this, what's this Oscar Isaac story? What is this? Yeah, I guess uh, Oscar Isaac was doing a little uh, interview about episode nine and said there's a lot more improvisation happening, more so than Force Awakens, more so than Last Jedi. And and the internet hates this? 
<laughs> yeah. Immediately yeah. he's like, oh, it's going to suck. Right. Hey, man, what does sorry. that mean? Oh, sorry to just brought suck. up Darth Maul there. I hope we can use that. I think that all that means, I can't remember which actor I was talking to about it. Like when you have particular, it might have been Dreyfus actually, um, when you're talking to, when you have a director who you think is going to keep you on script the whole entire <laughs> time, and you do a couple of off books, and the characters themselves, or you're inside of the, the situation, and they start feeling what the characters would say, they're not doing improv comedy. I, I, no, I, I think scene. the scenes that he's improving are most likely with BB-8. Well, I, mean, I think it's him and BB-8. It. It's a, it's a, the boy and his dog relationship, and they're fucking around, and it's... If you're improv. Oscar Isaac's manager, are you saying, don't sure. say that? Why did you just do that? No. You I don't mean, care? I don't think the manager gives I, a, I, I think Disney might. Well, oh. No, but even Disney. It's like, even so, it's like, why? No, that show, you're showing... If I'm JJ... That's the only person who, if he wants to say shush, should because he doesn't want his process. There are a lot of directors who allow their their actors to improv because they can get some stuff out of there. Yeah. It doesn't mean he has to use all of it. It means that maybe because Oscar Isaacs is so locked in to Poe at this point, and he's doing and he's having a conversation with Finn, and they start riffing about something, and then Jay's like, "I like what you guys did there. I like where that. Let, let, let's go with that. I wasn't going to use there. Look, the the fucking hello Johnny." Uh, from from Shining yeah. was improv. It's, it, or, it's Johnny. It's, it's Johnny. Johnny whatever. Point. I'm have, walking here. You have all improv. these characters and actors that have been doing these parts now for how many years? So right. they've had two movies under their belt. They feel their character. What so is the answer to that? Enough. How many years do we? Well, they started filming what 2013 for uh, Force Awakens. To four, uh, 2014, 13, something like that. Yeah, yeah. 2013. Mm -hmm. But it's, but the point the point is that and there's also there, there's no it's not a comment on JJ to use any of the improv takes. Right. It's like we got the take right. we need. Now let's bring in Colin Mockery yeah. and we'll have some fun. It's like he doesn't have to use. It's it's like we're gonna imp, It's not the whole script is improv. We're not using a script, guys. We're just gonna yeah. because that's because the problem was that they they automatically go back to Lord and Miller. And they think that because Lord Miller was doing a lot, uh, they were doing a lot of improv, and yeah. you hear these disastrous stories. That's a silly thing to get up in arms about. A really silly thing. Do you do you hear it? Do you when you hear the improv, do you get concerned? I couldn't care less. Right. Uh, if I heard there was no improv, I don't care. If I hear there's improv, anytime I, don't care. I hear improv, I get concerned. Really? Because I don't want to be at a show for an hour where I have to yell suggestions. No, but not. But for movies. <laughs> for movies, I'm fine. fine. Star Wars movie up there. All right. Well, we're fine with you Leia. guys. That was Collider Log. All right. We need some pizza toppings from the audience. We should. Mushrooms. <laughs> huh? Oh, that's wacky. I want some mushrooms. I respect improv. It's an art form. Uh, it no, is. No pineapple on pizza. And we are going to see you guys tomorrow. We have Riley. Who do we have on the show tomorrow? Oh, uh, no. David. And I'm, I go, we're going to figure out his name. He's from Ant Man and the Wasp. Dimash. Okay. David Dimash. Cool. Yeah, he's been. And he's also in Gotham. I'm going to go he with in, that. He was in, he was oh, in The him. Dark Knight also. Yeah. Yeah, The Dark yeah, he's Knight. He's coming in tomorrow. Um, so we're going to talk to him. He's at every, wow. he goes to every Marvel premiere. We see him every single one. Um, so really? he will be here tomorrow. And then I believe, Oh, I know that dude. Yeah, Johnny I'm, I'm in a movie with, with him. And Laquasta is on Wednesday. Laquasta is coming in on Wednesday. You're in a so. movie with I'm, David. I, I, oh. I'm in a movie with what him. What is it? What are you doing? Um, it's called Madness in the Method. It's Jay Muse's movie. Oh, cool. Um, and I'm in it. No, there wow. You go. And he is Is too. it a big role? You? N me? Uh, no, but I am. I do have a speaking role. Is it on the YouTube's? It's not out yet. Oh, okay. It's Jay Muse's directorial debut. Um, I don't know exactly. Harvey Three's movies on YouTube. Yeah. Flick ticks. Did you get that? Did Remember, for Screen Junkies, I co-hosted with Jay, and oh. then he needed uh, something for his movie, and he that's and he awesome. cast me in it. Yeah, it was great. Well, there you go. So you should have him on the show to talk about the movie when it comes out. Okay. All right. Well, guys, that is Collider Live. It is Monday. Tomorrow will be Tuesday. There will be a show on Tuesday and Wednesday. So tune back in. If you're not listening to us on Apple Podcasts, you should do that. Our podcast one. Do it. Leave a review. Rate it. Help us get our show higher and higher in the charts. It is happening. Of you guys. And, and we will see you tomorrow on Collider Live. <laughs>